Welcome back to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. I am your host, Will Compton, the boy Taylor, my co-host. He is in uh, the midst of training camp right now. You are listening to me right now. I am talking on this intro on Monday, August. What is it, August 1st? Yeah. It's fucking crazy that, like, we're, we're in the August, boys. We're in the August territory. Um, their first day of pads. I'm sure the heat is brutal out there. Shout out to those boys for grinding. I'm so glad I'm not in that training camp heat. Uh, right now, or and I won't be. Um, I've actually missed. If you guys think about it, I have uh, obviously this year is like different. I can claim this year, I guess. But if we include this year, I haven't been to like the last four training camps. The finesse king. Time will tell if I finesse this finesse this training camp and go into, go into a season at some point. Uh, before we get started, we got to shout out the greatest truck on the road. The Chevy Silverado. Can you blow that up for me a little bit, Jack? If you're looking to make a summer story a strong one, the Chevy Silverado can take you there. And that story will start as soon as you take the wheel. The Silverado ZR2 was built to tame the trails as the most off-road ready Silverado ever created, boys. And there are eight more Silverado models to choose from to make sure one fits your life. My personal life is the high country. I got it down at Freeland Chevrolet, the best in the business in the greater Nashville area. The Silver the Silverado provides the strength and Chevy truck capability to handle whatever comes next. With the Silverado, you have everything you need to not only write your own summer story, but also make it an unforgettably epic one. Chevy tr- the Chevy truck grit, hang on now, hang on now, hang on now boys. Chevy truck grits and smarts to make you unstoppable. I'm talking about how gritty and smart the Chevy Silverado is. I agree. Maybe next time I read ahead and we can reword that one a little bit because I think we can make the whole gritty and smarts part a lot better. Take command of your summer with the beautiful Chevy Silverado. Go to Chevy.com to learn more about the Chevy Silverado. The technology on websites these days, boys, you're practically sitting in, you're practically sitting in the vehicle when you're online. So go to Chevy.com to learn more about the Chevy Silverado. And if you live in Nashville or a little outside, let's say it within a two-hour radius of Nashville, Nashville, get your ass to Freeland Chevy because they're the best in class in Tennessee. Um all right, what do we have, boys? A lot to break down. I went up to SummerSlam over the weekend. That was insane. I went with the boy Mike Chandler, not to flex, because we're friends, but to also flex. We might be looking at a fight in November. I don't think it should be my news to break. If the, there isn't news yet, but we could potentially be looking at a fight in November. Potentially. There's nothing that's set in stone. JP, our analyst, our UFC analyst, is there something that's set in stone or is this all just hearsay right now? Just hearsay right now, but what do you think is going to happen? I believe I have not spoken with Michael Chandler or me or so will I, I will. I am. I yeah. Am according to, to my believe. sources, we will be seeing Whatever. Michael Chandler versus Dustin Poirier. Okay. And maybe November. I will have zero reaction to that. We yeah. can talk after the show. Uh, but went to SummerSlam. Dude, that was an awesome experience. Going to the WWE, that was my first one ever. I've never been to any of this, this stuff. I've been to like a, uh, I've been to like in Soulard in St. Louis, Missouri. I went to like one of those wrestling nights where there's like, yeah, the M word. Are we allowed to say the M word? Lee Corso did say, he said, not so fast, midget. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Oh, that's just me nervous laughing right there. Um, but yeah, where they have uh, the wrestling event like inside of like a cafeteria. But other than that, I've never been to like a, D- a WCW, a WWF, a WWE, none of it, dude. And that was electric. Bro, watching McAfee perform, I mean, he's got like three moves, but I love all of them. The backflip off the top, does the slow f- front flip onto somebody. Um, the sporadic punching, that's another move of his. But... It was electric. Logan Paul? Logan Paul is going to be a WWE superstar. Like, he legit might be the... Yeah, he's an athlete. He legit might be the world, the world champion one day. It's interesting, too, because I started following Logan, like, back in his Vine days. Like, he was one of the first people that got thrusted into Vine. And apparently, he was really good in high school football and wrestling. Like, very competitive. I think they grew up... They grew up in Ohio, right? 
Yeah, so like a state that's all about wrestling and fucking football. And Logan's apparently really good in that stuff. Now, I didn't know much more outside of like him, him claiming or stuff like that happening on Vine at times. But you can tell like he was a good athlete back in the day. I mean, the dude's like the frog splash off the top buckle. Onto a table. Onto a table. Landing that right. Like, it's crazy watching them, everybody kind of like perform and put on that kind of show. Uh, but that was, that, was, that was cool. It was cool. It was in Nissan Stadium. Ended up finessing my way to the front row. Started off, started off far away. We were, I mean, I feel like it's a flex saying I was in a suite, but it wasn't that great of an experience in the suite. Like, you're very far away. You're trying to watch the TV, and it's kind of like the timing is off with it. Ended up finessing getting all the way down to the front row. That was, that, that was insane. Yeah. I would go to more. I would go to more. Um, what else? Taylor going ghost on social media. Obviously, training camp has started. The boy, I felt like, was very quick to say his farewell on social media. Like, we got a month of the season, big dog. It's, you know. But I've spoken with him. He said the first 48 hours, obviously, he had some withdrawals. He wanted to really get back on there. He's itching to get on the apps. But after that, he says he's been in a very good rhythm. He's been very efficient with his days, wakes up, his words, wakes up every day, 5.30 in the morning, gets over and gets his workout in before practice and all that starts before meetings start so he doesn't have to lift after practice. I, I mean, that is a very good veteran move because you hate pr- having to work out after practice because your legs are shot, you're tired, you're sweating. You don't want to change from your cleats to your shoes and then go back in there and work out. Absolutely brutal. And then he says he's in bed. Like, a, like in bed by like eight o'clock, which sounds like love in the training camp world. Because if you're back at the hotel or you're back chilling at like seven thirty or seven, that's a nice training camp day. I know with Vrabel's first year, yeah, because I didn't really do training camp the second time I was here. The first year I was here, we didn't get out of training camp until like eight thirty. And I know some teams out there will keep you until like eight thirty, nine o'clock. I know with Washington, we would go. First meeting would be at like 7 in the morning or 7.30 in the morning. And then our last meeting wouldn't end until like 9.30. 9.30 was snack time. Because we're in like the, we're in like a hotel. We're like off site from the facility. But bro, that entire day, like you would have a good like lunch break. You'd have like two hours once you got back to the hotel to kind of like eat. You would, the move would be eat faster, take your food upstairs, get in the Norman Tech sleeves, those leg sleeves, those compression, those compression recovery leg system deals. And uh, you would try to eat as fast as you can, and then you'd try and, like, fall asleep for, like, an hour. But if you're back, what's up? Two weeks. Uh, is it two weeks or is it more? It, it's, it's up until, like, the third preseason game. Once you hit, like, the third preseason game is when you're kind of home free. That's where you would break camp, and then you'd, we'd make our way back to Ashburn if it was in Washington. Tennessee's, obviously, they have everything, like, at their facility. They, uh, they stay in, like, a hotel down the road. Um, but yeah, dude, he's apparently been, he says it's going by fast because he doesn't have the phone to fucking distract him, which I think is an awesome thing. I'm just, I'm just ready to see the boys play this season. And when Spooktober hits, you know, the boys gonna have a little bit of FOMO. The good news is for everybody that's listening, Taylor is going to be joining busting with the boys every week, um, on Mondays, I believe during the season to do the intro with us, the shout out, no free shout outs, the tear talk, having a good time, taking a little, you know, I guess, break from being 24 seven all ball. However, he will stay off social media the entire year. I think that's a big win that the boy will be on the bus. So everybody will get to still see the boy on the bus. Uh, Dude, big news coming out of Bussin, Bussin HQ. It is currently Wednesday. Tomorrow, the boys are traveling to Green Bay's training camp. This will be our first training camp. Bussing hard knocks. Boots on the ground. We're going to be interviewing LaFleur. Hopefully, Bakhtiari. 12. Man, we're trying to get that interview with 12. We're trying to get that interview with Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, Rob Tunyon, this is his episode. So we did him right before, uh, right before he left for training camp here in Nashville. Then maybe Preston Smith. If we get Preston Smith on. Yeah, 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 about the Tats. Talked about the Tats catch up on us since we played together in Washington. But, yeah, I think we'll have a huge episode with LaFleur. But, however, our first training camp, busting with the boys, 
or going to training camp next year. I think that just kind of sets up like a training camp, some type of training camp name, whether it's, Ooh, if we get Bisacci on, I just don't know. For, you know, he'll come on. Here's what's going to happen, guys. If we get Bisacci on, I'm calling it now. He's going to step on. He's going to call me Johnny Carson. This is your fucking radio show. Like, what the, where the fuck am I? He's just going to talk shit, and his go-to moves are going to be the radio show and Johnny Carson. So I'm just saying, I'm just calling it now. Huh? Not a bad compliment at all, but just shows that he's old. He's long in the tooth. He's going to be, he's going to repeat his jokes. Because those are, those, are, those are his jokes when he, whenever, if he were to text me or whenever I was on the Raiders last year. But going to Green Bay, we're fucking stoked about it. Maybe the boys, maybe we'll pop up at Titans training camp later on in the month. Maybe I'll hit up Rave and see if we can shake something. Because then you, you kind of have the concept of going to training camp with Green Bay. Now you take this concept and then try to rinse and repeat with whether, I mean, we, we have connects in Titans, Atlanta. I'm sure we could get in Washington if we wanted to go to Washington, but Washington would be kind of tough because that's not, they're not, you'd have to, that's a huge travel. It's a lot of travel right there in a short period of time. Like we're already in August fall, our fall schedule that's coming, that's coming out. I alluded to it a couple of days ago or over the weekend that we have, we're going to four college, college stadiums, college campuses. We're going to host five Titans tailgates. Because obviously, we're always for the boys. We started right here in Nashville, Tennessee. The Tennessee Titans are our first love. Taylor Lewan, Willie C. Um, and then we're going to host one watch party. I believe the watch party, Garrett, ha- have you been talking with Acme at all? Okay, so we will be doing everything at Acme again this year. So you can look forward to the home opener against the Giants. We'll be hosting a tailgate at Acme Feed and Seed right off First and Broadway, right across from the water. You can see the stadium, the pedestrian walkway. We're right next to it. You come party with us on the rooftop, the second floor, wherever we're set up, buying new merch, buying all this shit. And then we're going to go have a good time as the boys whip the Giants ass in week one. We can also confirm that the watch party is going to be against Green Bay, right? Correct. Green Bay or Tennessee at Green Bay. It's a Thursday night game on November 27th. 27th. That's going to be confirmed. There's more up there that we're confirming right now. I don't want to give away our schedule too much because I'm sure we'll have a nice little fun graphic. And then the college games we're going to be going to is it looks like, it sounds like what we are working on. The home opener at Nebraska on September 3rd, North Dakota at Nebraska. We're obviously going to drag them across the center of the earth and start off the season 2-0 because we're going to win over in Dublin against Northwestern, against the nerds. Then uh, we are looking to go to, obviously, the Bus and Bowl. That's going to be on November 12th. You got it right here, Garrett, to where we can go in, in sequence? Yeah, I got it right here. After Nebraska, on September 3rd, we'll be in Knoxville for the that's Tennessee-Florida right. game. Uh, Florida at Volunteers. Correct. That's on September 24th, right? Correct. Barstool Football Show will be there as well. That'll be a good time. Yep. Location to be determined about where we'll be parked at. Mm -hmm. What's after the Tennessee one? The next one is going to be Clemson at Notre Dame on 11-5. You know why that fires me up? Because I haven't planted one seed to be at that game. And (laughs) I'm just saying that we're fucking going. We're going to be there. Yeah, some way, (laughs) somehow. Our birthday, too, is for Really? Oh, yeah. Let's go, dude. Are we going to have Shane come with us? Yeah, so that's the only seat I've planted. I hit, I reached out to Shane Gillis. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? November 5th, Clemson at Notre Dame. Do you want to come with us? We're going to get the bus out to Notre Dame. Somewhere, somehow, we're going to make it fucking happen. If anybody from Notre Dame's out there listening right now, help us out if you can. If you have any hookups, you have any connects, places to go to. Obviously, we'll reach out to Michael Mayer, who's obviously a friend of the show now. Stud. Stud. And, and see how well we can shake up there. Maybe we interview him again a couple of days before the game, but we're going to some way, somehow, we're going to get our asses out to Notre Dame for that Clemson at Notre Dame game prime time. And then the Bus and Bowl. And then the next week is the Bus and Bowl in the November Big House. November 12th in the Big House at Michigan, Nebraska, Michigan, two undefeated teams going at it for the Battle of the Bus, the Bus and Bowl. And matter of fact, if, if, we, if we, have ver- we have verbal commitments from every party, the uh, head coaches, the ADs, we have to get ink on paper. Our lawyer back there, Jack, it will be that same document. We have to get ink on paper, but we have verbal commitments from everybody that, that we are declaring Nebraska versus Michigan for the next however many years, eight. the Bussin' Bowl. Next eight years. Yes. If 
Trophy's not ready yet, but trophy is getting made. Trophy's been getting made for I don't know how long. Like, people are ready to make this trophy for us. Now, if you think about it, we will be the first bowl game. We will be the start of bowl season. Amen. Amen, baby. Rivalry. 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 Rivalry week. week comes early. Comes early. Bowl season is starting mid-November at the Bus and Bowl at Michigan. But those are the college games we're going to. Obviously, we will uh, let you guys know about the tailgates. We're obviously going to be repping the boys all year long. I do know for sure we are also doing a tailgate uh, at the when the Raiders come to town. Raiders at Titans, that's going to be fucking massive. We're actually going to partner with them. With uh, I got my like lisp going on. We're, par- we're going to partner with the boys at uh, uh, Raider Fan Radio. Raider Fan Radio, right? I, I didn't want to butcher Fan Raider Radio. Raider Fan Radio, no disrespect, boys. Big Swag Jeff, Jeff Swag, Swaggy Jeff. Swag Murph. Jeff. Shout out the boys. We are going to be doing something to where hopefully we have the silver and black, the two-tone blue, just everybody. Maybe there'll be a fight. Who knows? Yeah, hopefully. We can only hope that there's a fight or something. But yeah, our fall, tra- our fall schedule is getting put together. We are going to, now we're going to jump into our shout-out, no free shout-out segment of the week, our favorite segment of the week, brought to you by Bustin' with the Boys. And then we're going to jump into the Rob Tunyon episode. We interrupt this episode to shout out the boys at Duke Cannon. No free shout outs, boys. Their deodorant is made for guys who run hot. I've talked about it at length. The dry ice. They're, I don't know how many different formulas they have now. I think four. I've seen four different ones. Now the navy blue cap is my favorite. But the dry ice, I'm a guy who sweats a lot. Thank God. And I am sweating now in this humidity. Being on the bus, we grind. Dry ice, you are not sweating. It is like an AC unit under your pits all day long on high blast at its coldest. If you hit max AC in your Chevy Silverado, that is what is on your armpits. It is a nice, uh, what is that sensation? Minty sensation like under your armpits. It's probably the best way to, it, to describe it for the dry ice. They're big, ass, they're big ass brick of soap. It also has a scrubber. The scrubber is a travel case. The shit is next level. Like, if you guys use a scrunchie, look no further. Duke Cannon's got your back. Their case, it's like a loofah. It's like a traveling loofah. You got in its little loofah case, dude, and you don't have to use your loofah anymore. Now, I will experiment every now and then. I'll rub the big-ass brick of soap just on my body and, like, the main spots, and then I'll take my loofah and rub it all around. Obviously, traveling to Green Bay this week, I will be taking that that travel case with me because you can use it anywhere. Big ass brick of soap, just pop in your travel bag and you're ready to go. Their cologne, their sandalwood, my favorite. They now have it in spray. They might have had it the entire time. I had like the little the little pocket spray and then also their their uh, hard cologne where you just rub on your neck and everything else. But the sandalwood is my favorite. Check out Duke Cannon at any, at any Target or go to DukeCannon.com and use code BUSSIN for 15% off your first order. Now, I do not know. I would love to see if this works. Go to Target, buy Duke Cannon, and when you're checking out, just say, hey, I got this code BUSSIN for 15% off, and see if that works. If it doesn't, just say, hey, take that out of my cart. I'll just go on DukeCannon.com and use the code on their website. And then, obviously, check out after that. Tell them, that they had, tell them to have a great day and all that stuff. But the boys got your back. Back to the episode. Now we are diving into our shout out, no free shout out segment of the week. Blossy would absolutely love to start it off. He starts us off fast each and every week. Let's fucking hear it, Blossy. All right. My shout out, no free shout out of the week goes to somebody who accounts for 2000 of the uh, 49ers offensive yards. The 49ers oh, personal hype, go, man. Dude. <laughs> All right. Somebody who's going to be <laughs> crucial to Trey Lance's development this year. And that is Debo Samuel. My shout out, no free shout out, goes to Debo Samuel for securing the bag. That's a round of applause. Can we get some more energy, Jack? Can we get some energy? You always got a shout out when the when the boys get paid, dude. Like obviously JP's fired up because because he's a gamecock. Bloss is fired up because he's a niner. But we're fired up because he's a fucking boy, dude. And he just secured the bag. What was it? Three years, seventy eight million, up to seventy eight. Yep. 58 guaranteed, 58 and a half guaranteed. Like, that's fucking awesome, dude. Bloss, very predictable shout out. We're going to move on to our number two, our whole, our two-hole slot, Jack McPherson. What do you got for us, Jack? 
Uh, my shout out, no free shout out of the week, um, goes to the post gym endorphin rush. It is when the dopamine hits after you've just grinded in the iron paradise and you thought you weren't going to make it. And then you're on the drive home and you go, damn, today's actually going to be a lot better than I thought it was. And I don't know, something about just leaving the gym after you've just, that sweat equity has just like been put in and. It is mm. a beautiful thing to me, and I'll never take it for granted ever in my life. I can't wait to get to the gym later and just absolutely destroy myself so I can ride home, windows down, good song playing on the radio, just enjoy the rest of my day because I know I put in that work. Sweat equity. That's fucking good, bro. That one fired me up because you're right, like, especially when you have a hard leg day. Because cool. in the middle of that leg day, you're ready to fucking kill yourself. What am I doing right now? But let me just push through these, this last set, these last two sets. And when you do, and you're right, whenever you're driving home and you're kind of, your legs are shaking like a dog shit in peach seeds, like you're fucking like ready to go. You know what I'm saying, JP? Yeah. When I you're in the shower and you can before. move in, you can barely hold yourself up a little bit. Yeah. That was, I'd never heard that before. That was good though. Shut up, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My shout out, no free shout out of the week. Goes to when you're uh, turning left at a red light, or I guess the green light about to turn red, whatever. And somebody's somebody is uh, crossing the street, and you're waiting for them. And then they look up and they see you, and they give you a light jog to get further across, to speed it up across the crosswalk so you can go. So my shout out goes to those people that jog across the crosswalks. I am one of those people, and it bothers me when I'm with people and I jog. And they don't jog with me. I'm like, yeah, show some respect, right? To the drivers, and you're kind of like separated from them a little bit. And you're like, okay, I'll, you look back. Am I looking stupid right now? Are y'all looking stupid? We know y'all look stupid. Yeah, that's a good All one, right, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my shout out, no free shout out, is gonna go to all the fans that buy merch. We just put the pocket tee back up, and we got a little note from HQ that Will's tweet. Put a little bump in those sales, so unfortunately, the shout out half oh, goes the to Will. The tweet got a bump in the sales. Got a bump in the sales. So shout out, no free shout out to the fans and those rider dies on Will's Twitter. Hey, let's go, boys! You gotta hit that. When? When do I do that? I haven't heard that one. The slow clap, and then everybody comes up. All right, we'll do that next time. I appreciate that. But the last time we did a, we did a team break, I felt like it, the vibes weren't fully there. Remember when we had the shot? We were excited about... We were drunk. Was it 200,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube? And we kind of did a cheers, and then we broke it down. Oh, yeah, being number one on the charts. And we broke it down. I felt like... You think so? Nobody put it on... Nobody. We didn't, we didn't clip it. It wasn't good enough to clip. If the energy's high, then it's usually like probably good enough to clip. But I, I, I fuck with what you said. So we'll get into that next time. We can do that next Or you can lead it next time. All right. Uh, oh, it's me. Hey, but you're right. Our pocket tees are back. Those were the best sellers in 2021. We have, is it color waves or ways? A lot of different color ways. A lot of different colorways. And it really is. Our, it's our, it's our best-selling tee. It's good to have it back. There's been a long legal process that has went into this thing. Anheuser-Busch, they came after us, came after us hard. However, we learned that it was just somebody that went rogue in the office, some new, somebody new that went rogue in the office, some intern, somebody new on the job out in New York. They don't really understand. The, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has been fired since. The Grim Reaper came and got him. But uh, you don't really understand the culture that's going on. That everybody else from Anheuser Busch that reach out was like, "Hey, we'll get this thing figured out. We'll get this thing solved." Obviously, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, let's just give a random shout out to him. I don't know if he did much. However, it's fun to just shout out Dale Earnhardt Jr. for all the work he does for Budweiser. Um, but our pocket tees are back. That's a fire shout out. I'm excited about it. And yeah, so if you're watching this right now. Take a moment, store it up, barstoolsports.com forward slash busting with the boys. That is our merch store. Go buy up all the merch. We, you know, I can confidently say like we're, we're doing well. We're doing well. Yeah, we're number one. Yeah. I, 
I wanted to be humble, but JP like fires me up at times. Like we're number one. <laughs> we have the best merchandise bar none. Um, my shout out, no free shout out, change up the pace a little bit. Ever since I've gotten these new teeth, obviously my mouth is a lot fuller, no pause. So there's a lot less space that go on in between my teeth. The boy, as we all know, I've been on, I've been on tape plenty of times. People love to tweet pictures of me eating. Uh, there's videos of me eating, ordering food, however you guys want to fucking make fun of me and drag me down and uh, make me feel bad about myself to where I have to get therapy. I do eat. The boy loves to eat. And I get a lot of stuff in my teeth now. With that, I have a new love for toothpicks. My shout out, no free shout out of the week, is going to go to toothpicks because if you looked at my mouth before, I have small teeth. I have like smaller teeth that I replaced the top eight with obviously bigger, gorgeous, pearly whites. My wisdom teeth, I've had a mouth to where I don't have to take out my wisdom teeth. So I have the molars and the wisdom teeth back in the back. So I get a lot of food back there. And I legitimately enjoy having teeth caught in my food back there. My tongue. Do you guys, do you guys ever notice, you guys ever notice me like uh, if I'm, whether I'm thinking or focused or something, like my tongue is always kind of like working. So like when I have, (laughs) Sean Watson got six games. Uh, my, t- my tongue is always working. So whenever I get teeth, I'm literally battling my teeth with my tongue all the time. I always have to ask the waiter, the waitress, hey, do you guys have toothpicks? Like, I always go back in the pantry and enjoy. Like, you know how, uh, by the way, shout out the Anus Pod. If you haven't watched, go watch the Anus Podcast that I did with Nick and KB. That was hilarious. But you know how uh, Nick explains the toothpick or the uh, uh, Q-tips, the Q-tips in his ears, how he like, it's like sex for him. Dude, I enjoy digging in with a, uh, with a toothpick. I'm getting Q-tips, toothpick. Uh, so my shout out, no for shout out goes to, goes to toothpicks. Yeah, that's a good pool. That's a good pool. Those are usually at restaurants. Matter of fact, I think I need to go on Amazon and check that out. I, dude, I have another free shout out that I thought about doing. I'll save it. Uh, just because we got to get into this, uh, Rob Tunyon episode. The Rob Tunyon episode was great. Rob, he's a friend of the show. He's a boy. He's all time. We had him on last year with myself and George Kittle. That episode was a lot of fun. We, we talked a lot about the mental side. George and Rob are very much in tune with like awareness, uh, the mental side, mental performance, getting be, being optimal every day. Rob went through a year last year not having the most receptions in the world to start off the year. There's a lot of uh, articles being written about his production. He starts to uptick and then he tears his ACL. And as we all know, following Taylor along his ACL journey, that can bring you to like new lows because you're like in it. You're, you kind of feel alienated from the team. You're rehabbing on your own all the time. You have a lot of ebbs and flows. Blossy, who's torn his knee, can probably talk and attest to that as well, uh, working through the rehab of that whole thing. And so he talks a lot about his mental journey struggles, successes with tearing his ACL, his new perspective on thinking like, um, what was he talking about? Like, he's glad it happened because it kind of, he was able to step back and kind of look at it from like a zoomed out lens. Um, He talks a lot about how that, that mental side went into, he was a restricted free agent last year who went into a contract year. So that obviously sucks for anybody going through an injury going into their contract year. So he talks a little bit about the negotiation side with the Packers. He talks about getting over the hump in Green Bay, like things that he saw from a different lens, being somebody who was out on IR, seeing the boys, seeing the locker room every day, seeing uh, the boys going into the playoffs. From It's like a different perspective when you're injured and looking at it from the outside and you're not in it. You're not in the box anymore of that grind. So he talks about what he thinks there. Um, we have some fun with Aaron Rodgers' new tattoo. Our tear talk is sandwiches, phenomenal tear talk that I think you guys will enjoy. And I will, I do want to say, Jack, you were shouting out that local spot earlier, but I want to, uh, I want to say if I did it again, Penn Station would make its way in. I've had Penn Station twice now. There's one over in like the Bellevue area of town and Penn Station is fire. 
I've only had it twice, so I won't go into like claiming it there, but I would definitely, now that I've had it, I have a new respect for Penn Station. So, so pat out, shout out Penn Station, no free shout outs. Now enjoy the episode with Rob Tunyon from the Green Bay Packers. Big hugs, tiny kisses. Are you excited to be back on the bus? I'm so excited. Why are you all of a sudden talking a little bit calmer and quieter? What? You were just kind of fired up with the vibes before we started the pod. And now we're now I got to lock now. in. Because now I'm thinking about the sandwiches. Because I haven't even... You got time, though. We'll bring it back up. I and know, it, but I'm really thinking. Thing to where it's like a conversation. Yeah, no, no. But I'm really thinking now because... I don't know. The good thing Jack does is Jack in the back, he will pull up all the, he will pull up the national oh, chain. So okay. we'll be able to see him. Hell yeah. You won't just have to think, you won't yeah. just have to go up the top. <laughs> Jack from the back? Yeah. Jack from the back. Ooh, public. I, oh, yeah. I just learned about that when I moved here. Bro, I'm telling you, people are spreading the good word. I know. Oh, Penn Station too? Okay, I'm back. All right. I'm back. Well, let's get into like, let's talk about you know, all the good stuff that's catching up with you. Like, what's new with you? You just tore, you tore your ACL. How's everything going? How you feeling? <laughs> you said, let's talk about everything good. Um, no, rehab. So I'm about eight months out Yeah. from surgery. I feel great. Do you feel great? Like, I actually feel, like, great. Like, like you hear all the horror stories and you're thinking, and like, honestly, yeah, I, I feel well, good, like, really good. You know, about you hear I'm the doing. Adrian Peterson story and then you hear, like, what he, like, what the problems were after that. Like he had the great season, but after that he had like multiple surgeries, you know, the career kind of died out from there. Cause you know, he went for the rushing title and stuff like that. And then, like you said, you hear the horror story. So you hear both, but for me, it was honestly just sticking with my process and worrying about like me and bettering myself physically, mentally, spiritually, all that. Um, and it kind of helped me on and off the field. Like, with everything across the board, like truly like becoming like not only a better football player from it, but like a better man. Like I got to step back from football, like during this time, uh, kind of just see how my value was missed at certain aspects and like where I could be better at and on and off the field. Like I'll keep probably saying that because I really got to, I masked a lot of things with football. Like I was really like, hurting in a lot of areas mentally and whatever, but like an area you're able to talk about. I mean, just like, you know, off the field, just, you know, like internally, like, you know, you think you're, you're a lot more, you know, worthy of certain things than you are at the time, but like everything comes with like divine timing. And, um, I truly believe in that. Like, you know, whether it's a contract or stats or, you know, you know, a marriage or, whatever you think it is, like a big house, you know, whatever you think anyone's goals are, or, you know, your imagination, like desires, like everything is going to come with divine timing. If you just like worry about the now and the present. And it really made me present in which like, I don't even know how to explain it, but I really got to just take football out of the equation for a little bit yeah, and really just live a life where I had to face out of football reality and I feel like that's what I needed and now I didn't at the time you're like yeah you know why is this happening whatever but it really took me like a shorter than I expected to realize that this is for a reason you got to see a lot of things happen with football like you know Devontae leaving you got to see you know our defensive guys get paid and it's like it's just not my time yet you know if I keep you know worrying about me bettering myself on the field off the field that stuff's going to come. And I just didn't, I was getting ahead of myself a little bit. And I did such a good job in 2020 with living in the present. I had a great season, whatever. And then you get into 2021 and, you know, maybe I was a little ahead of myself uh, now that I look back on it. But I really believe that everything truly happens for a reason. And something so simple for me, like it wasn't like a gruesome, like, you know, it was just a plain ACL. And I just got to really just, you know, it is like a, you know, a season ending, but you know, you come back stronger from it, like across the board, like right. I said, mentally, physically, spiritually, well, the rest of your body's getting healed up too. Cause... Right. And I, like I said, I got to really just take football out of the equation and just start from like ground zero. So correct me if I'm wrong, but like, listen to you and you talk about like getting ahead of yourself. Obviously you came out of 2020. You're like, we were, 
obviously last year we're talking about you being a Pro Bowl snub, like you had a hell of a year. Mm -hmm. Going to 2021, you signed a, a, a restricted, you were a restricted free agent. Yeah. So you get signed to a one-year tender. So in athletes, a hungry athlete competitor's mind, yeah. it's like it's bag year, it's contract year and everything yeah, else. Right. You get to where you tear your knee and everything else. It seems like uh, you get, when you talked about Devontae and then guys on the defense getting paid, it seems like as all of us do, every athlete, do, we all do this. Right. You sit there and you get caught up comparing yourself to everybody else. Right. Like life looking in everybody else's pocket to where you're right. like, this is what's going to be, this was supposed to be my year to where you kind of yeah. get angry. Yeah. And so you were kind of saying that that process didn't last really long for you to kind of check yourself and yeah. realize. You know, it, was, it wasn't more so like, quote unquote, like pocket watching for me. Right. It was more so like, you know, I come in, I had a great season 2020, you know, 12 touchdowns, lead the league, you know, you're like the you're like seen as the dude who has a shitload of fun on the field. Yeah, and I, and I was, but then like I wasn't at the beginning of the year because you know like you know our tackles were down. You know I'm doing a lot of blocking and chipping, which is fine. You know that's football, mm -hmm. but you know like I'm I wasn't being you know used how I was the last year, and you know we're winning games, so I don't care. Like you know like my ego wasn't hurting you know via that. It was more so I'm like. You know, all these guys are keep like progressing and I'm like, you know, my quote unquote, like production on the, you know, field wasn't there, but like, I'm becoming a better block. I'm becoming a better football player. But then you hear like outside noises like, oh, he's like going down. He's going down. He's dropping. It's yeah. And then, you know, and then I hit like a three game stretch, like before my injury where I started taking off again. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Like I'm really turning up right now. Hey, hey, just do me a favor. Right. And then that happened. So that's why I was like more like, damn, I was just hitting like I was just getting over that like hump of like down on myself. And then I started going and then I like hit another thing. So that's why I was like, I feel like I was just getting a little ahead of myself. But then it just reminded me that I really have to just do this for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to like the validation from an outside external source is so like fake you know i score i led the league or tied trav with you know 11 12 touchdowns 2020 you know they're gonna rate me the 19th best tight end so like take it for a walk right yeah and that's what i'm saying is like you can't do stuff for external sources or proving external people wrong it's like i'm just gonna continue to focus on me, my growth, my process, and take care of my family. Right. Because that's ultimately what I want to do. I don't want to be a superstar. Like, I can't go out because, like, there's cameras all on me. Like, that's not the life I want to live. I really just want to, like, do I want to be that type of person on the field? Hell yeah. But, like, also, I just want to take care of my family and live that type of life and just be, like, isn't it hard to not get caught up in some of that though? When and you it have, is when you have yeah. the external, you see articles, and then when you get in season, it's like when you're in the off season, you realize, um, like you whether you take a vacation right after the season, or you get back in your process of training, and yeah. you look back at the season, you realize how small things were, but how big they were in your mind at the time because right. during football season, subconscious thinking. Yeah, the NFL is like the hottest show. Right. on TV for a, an extended period of time. Like the NFL is everything to some people. Right. So it's, it's, and then when you're like, you're playing well and whether or not you're looking for articles on yourself or whatnot, like it's hard to not see a lot of things, yeah. especially being on social media. Right. You might not even be looking for it, but you'll be tagged in some bullshit or right. just tagged in stuff. And you might go down a wormhole for a second, but it's hard not to get caught up sometimes in that fast lane. Well, of that's just like, being everyone a has an ego. Yeah. Like everyone, you can, you know, you can, even if someone's like not an egotistical person or not ego driven, like everyone has an ego mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just subconsciously getting hit and you don't even know until like, there's like an out, like an outburst or something like big dramatic happens. Um, but yeah, I agree with you when you say that, like things just come to you and that comes with the job though. Like, like an NFL football player, like you're constantly like every Sunday it's, that's everything to everyone. Like, yeah, ninety percent of the people are watching football on Sundays, right? Yeah. I mean, and our when, lives are revolved around us, right? You know what I mean? Like fantasy football, like you know, like you're saying, like you don't want to come across people, but it's like, you, like it's funny because you know you get like those tweets that you're like, 
you suck, one catch for five yards. It's like, dude, I ran three routes. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Devontae had 22 catches for 200 yeah. yards and four touchdowns, like, and we won. Yeah. Like, I don't care. I'm going to be one of those guys on his <laughs> Twitter this year. Like, come on, man, one catch, five yards? Yeah. But, but I, I, go ahead, finish. Go ahead, finish, because I, I just, a I just, question. I, I just think overall, like, last season, like, I truly, like, grew so much and like i'm thankful that that happened i truly am because i if i go the whole season being healthy and all that happens and i'm up for a big contract am i even in green bay you never know and like with a good quarterback a great defense like those are the things that like i want on a team like in a super bowl team like you have a one of the best if not the best quarterback of all time as your quarterback and we have a bunch of people coming back on defense and then some. And then we don't have a number one receiver anymore. Like, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. like, that's the pressure I want to put on myself because I want to be that guy. And I grew so much. And, like, even mentally, like, I'm not scared to come back. Like, I'm almost, and I'm not, like, over eager to come back. I'm just, like, smiling internally because I'm, like, you know, some people forgot. Ooh, like, <laughs> talk to him. About I mean, but and and not even in Man, like I got chills when he said that. I didn't know what he was gonna say. And and not even in like a you know. That's why I don't like come like I don't like talk like off field. I don't do social media as much. Like I don't like like this is all I like. I'll come on and like hang with you guys and do all this stuff. But mm -hmm. I'm not gonna come on and like talk this that because that's not who I'm about. Like I really just like go on the field. Like you said, like I have fun on the field. I don't talk shit off the field. I'll like talk shit on the field and have fun because that's like the whole point of a competitive nature. Like, right. like I'm super competitive. I love having a good time. Like shit talking back and forth is not personal. That's like part of the game. Right. And that's why I know a lot of these guys off the field and it's not like a, like a buddy buddy thing, but like on the field, like people are really trying to feed their kids and, you know, put a roof over people's heads. Like this is all they have. Mm -hmm. Like, all my marbles are in this basket. Like, this is what I have. Like, this is how I want to take care of my family, my future family, like, generations. Like, I'm putting all my marbles into this. So, for me, like, I'm going to have, like, the best time doing it, like, on the field and just, like, take care of business off the field, like, quietly and to myself. But, like, on the field, like, I'm definitely going to show I'm having a good time. This is, like, I always laugh because, like, when I score a touchdown or, like, I'm wilding on the field, the first thing I think about is, like, all my high school boys watching. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's like, awesome. they're, like, you know, like, even in college, like, they were, like, you know, what are you going to do in the end zone? I'm, like, you tell me. Like, you guys are watching. Like, yeah. this is this is us. Y'all like, boys want to see. Yeah. And it's fun because, like, I'm really, like, out there, like, like, not only for myself, like, you know, wilding for the boys, but, uh, like, yeah, for the family. Like, m like, my mom is, like, laughing and stuff. Like, my dad's, you know, so proud, like. Uh, you enjoy playing the game. I really do. And you but enjoy I, the fact that you get to like this is yeah. And I don't even like the like I don't like the like when people say like this guy plays for this reason. Like I really just enjoy playing for my family's experience too. Like my dad, like this dude's a you know a sports fan growing up. Has lived on the same street his whole life. He yeah. bought you know a house two houses up from his parents, and that's the house I grew up in. Like. He's gone to the same job since he's been 16 years old, like the company, like he's been grinding, you know, for 40, 50 years at the same wake up, 530, go to work, come right back, like the same path. And for me to be able to be a spark or like a different light or like a getaway for him, like he can just come up and go to all my games. He like doesn't miss games because like, but that's just like, I'm trying to outwork him. Yeah, and I'm not trying to outwork anyone in the league. I know everyone's working hard, but no one's working hard. Like, I know really who's working hard, and that's, like, my dad. Like, I'm really trying to outwork that man and make, like, him believe, like, like that dude works. Like, I'm really trying to outwork my dad more than anything because he's done the same thing every day. Ooh. One way, come right back. Same street, wake up. He's woke, he's literally has woke up on the same street his whole life and gone to the same business same uh same shop and come right back home same time every day for 50 something years 
What a legend, dude. We, yeah. we need to get those hoodies, by the way. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder. I do want to ask, like, I really enjoy your perspective. Everybody who listened to the first episode and for everybody tuning in, go listen to George Kittle and Rob Tunyon last year we sat on the bus. You have a, uh, you're definitely somebody who, like, works on your mental side a lot. And so I'm going to start with this question because I want to come back to, the me- to uh, like, that mental side of, working on yourself and developing and you, you, you're thankful for what happened this past year. And I kind of want to talk about how you were speaking on last year's pod. But, um, what I wanted to say is like, I really enjoy listening to your perspective on it all. Like you kind of zoom out and take like a zoomed out approach. Yeah. Um, when things do happen to you or why you do it and talking about your dad and your friends and the fun you have, but you can also feel the chip that you kind of keep on your shoulder. Like, yeah. you, I, like I I see it, like, looking at you. You kind of feel, like, that energy of, like, when you say, like, mother, like people forgot. Yeah. Like, you can feel that chip. Where do you feel like you got that chip? Outside of, obviously, seeing your, seeing your dad work as you grew up, do you yeah. feel like it comes from your undrafted background? Like, where do you feel like you've developed this, this shift that you also speak with while having the perspective on everything? Um, I just got the chills, by the way. Um, That's fucking cool. Um, I just think... To be honest, I've just always kind of had it, like, coming from a small school, under-recruited uh, as a quarterback in high school. Yeah, I did see you went to Indiana State. You know, and then I go to Indiana State. Stuff. Um, You know, kind of just did, you know, the coach changed, like, right after. Like, I went to Indiana State for this coach, Trent Miles. Like, like he was, like, a, you know, a MFR, like, tough, and that's how my dad was. And that's, like, the type of coach I like. You need to be, like, dominated. Chill. (laughs) (laughs) But I just, but I just like people, I just like being held accountable. Mm. Like I love when, but like out of like, out of love and like winning, not just because like the coach has an ego or like just because he wants to like belittle someone. No, he's like, I'm trying to make a man out of you. Like that's what I got. Prepare you for the world. Right. And like, you know, I didn't like really do it for like the name on my back per se, but like, you know, we were a, you know, a a German immigrant family. We came in and we just started that family, like the family business, you know, like it was just like whatever you want or whatever you picture, what do you perceive your life to be? Like you got to go do it. So like, that's kind of where the chip came for me is like, I kept being like, you know, under recruited. Then I go to Indiana state, you know, the coach changed, the new coaching staff comes in. You know, I, I was the backup quarterback. The starter went down. I played a little bit. I was I, I was not ready for my opportunity because I was comparing. I'm like, I should be starting, yada, yada. Starter goes down. I come in. I'm not ready. So then they're like, you know, he's coming back. The older guy's coming back after injury. And I'm like, I'm like done with the quarterback. I just want to play football. I'm like sick of like all like the nuances of like, you know, the politics and all that. I'm like, just put me at receiver and let me just go play football. And then I go, you know, set the records at receiver for, you know, the three years I played receiver, you know, most touchdowns in a season, most touchdowns career, second yards, second to most yards, whatever. And then, you know, you go into the draft process and then it's like, I'm continuing to grow. I'm a white dude. I'm like, I'm going to go play tight end. Like, let's be honest. Like, everyone's trying to play receiver in the Love NFL. that awareness. You got to have that awareness, But, man. like, everyone's trying to play receiver in the NFL. I mean, I don't, and the athleticism didn't lack. You know, I was running a 4-4 four, four at 225, six foot four. Like, I felt the – I built – I you know, I was built for it and stuff like that. But, like, coming out of Indiana State, like, you're not going to get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. But I knew that, you know, I wanted to play fo- – like, I want to play football. Like, I love the – everything that comes with football. So like the blocking aspect was just going to be effort. I can go run routes on safeties and linebackers all day, whatever. But like a lot of the time it was just like, do you have the will and want to like contact and physical? And I'm like, yeah. Like, so when that process was going on, um, you know, I thought I was going to get, you know, drafted in the later rounds. We all did brother. Yeah. But, like, you know, like, the teams that, I like... Too. I was, like, five, fifth you know, round to seventh. But, like, you go to, like, all these, like, combines and pro days. Like, I went to the North... I did my pro day at Northwestern and, like, killed it. Like, better than the Northwestern guys. Yeah. And then, you know, then you go into the draft and you see all these guys go off and yada, yada. Yeah. And then you go... Then I go to Detroit, undrafted, 
and they had a fourth round pick. They had a couple free agents here and there that were, they were bringing in. And I was getting like two reps at practice, but then I'd like when inside run would come, I would go down to the one-on-ones and then just like tear it up, like go down the receivers and just tear up the DBs, you know, the second round draft pick, like whatever. And, and this is in training camp of your rookie year with in Detroit. In Detroit. And then like, you know, everyone was like kind of like banged up. So then like, you know, I was doing seven. I was Stafford and like, I'm doing well, like, and I'd get in the games. Like I had never blocked anyone with my hand in the dirt until a preseason game, like not even in practice. Like I was like holding the pad and whatever. And then they would just throw my ass in the fucking game. And yeah. I was like, assholes. Yeah. Um, but I, and then they told me that, um, you know, they told me right from the beginning, like the GM brought me in, said from the beginning, you're not going to make the 53. You're going to be our practice squad tight end. We're just going to like develop you. Cuts came. They told me same thing. Come in tomorrow, sign your practice squad contract. I come in. They even, they even had me pick my number. I go up there and they're like, hey, we don't have any more practice squad spots for you. No way. Like they really like, I even picked my number. 84, I remember. Oh, they <laughs> played. Fuck, man. And I then I get the business that, of the NFL, but bro. But they kept me in a room for like an hour before they told me. To figure out all the. No, no, no. They were making sure I didn't sign anywhere else. So then I game, bro. So then I come out and they whatever shit. I packed my, my locker. I packed my car up, drove right to Chicago and hung out with my friends. Ate a bunch of Popeyes and just like I remember that. I like remember I just like went to my like college buddy's house and I just like decompressed. And I was just like. I really just like understood like the NFL is like a business and not a fucking game. Like no one gives a fuck. And then I went on a bunch of um, like uh, workouts. Like I was a workout warrior. That's how I met my boy Skit, Skit Ellis. Like we were, we were like, we were the two, um, we were the two boys like that were like, you know, Colts, New Orleans. You guys would be at the workouts together. Oh, hey, see the boy. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I was going and everyone said like, you know, off season, once the next off season comes, like once the next off season comes, like we want to sign you to a futures. And so I just kept going on workouts, kept going on workouts. And, uh, then eventually in like December, that's where, um, went to the green Bay workout, killed it. Um, I went to the players lounge, like took a nap and I woke up and like, I like slept past my flight, like back home. Like no one came and got me. And no one came and woke you up like, hey, you got we Yeah, got so then I you. come in and I'm like, hey, like, is anyone going to, like, take me to the airport? Like, I, I didn't know. And they're like, oh, no, we're signing you to the practice squad. I'm like, also, no one's going to tell me. Like, right. I'm just sitting here just, like, just jumping. Just up the scout right in front of you. Right, and I was just, like, chilling. But, um, um, yeah, and then that was, like, the rest is history. Like, I you finished out the, you finished out the season. Yeah, that was in December. Was like, yeah, it was, like, four weeks. They didn't end up not making the playoffs. Uh, well, we ended up not making the playoffs. It was December. So, I would say, like, four weeks I was on practice squad, and it was, like, so lame. I was, like, you really just practice the whole week and then don't go play in the games. I'm, like, I'm never doing this again. You didn't know that about practice squad? No, I just was, like... I was like, like, you know, I thought I would have been like happy, like, hey man, like I'm a part of the team. I was like, no, I want to be playing in the game. Oh, bro, practice squad is brutal. And I only how did it for what, four weeks. Yeah, how old or what year was this when you came into the league? Rookie. That was like later that my what rookie, year was that? 2017, I believe. So what were they at? Ten guys on the practice squad at that point? Yeah. Bro, so my rookie year, I think, was the last year for it. We had eight on our practice squad at Washington. And I had to do linebacker, tight end, fullback, just the entire day. Like, I yeah. hated I hated my rookie year as far as being on practice squad. It was brutal. I would go home and play just Grand Theft Auto online and then dread waking up the next day. And then on Saturday, they would have the practice squad guys come in at, at 6 in the morning to do a workout. Yeah. I'm talking like yep. a grindy workout, yep. bro. Yeah. So that way you're not – obviously, you got like the next few days off. but. Right. But well, I think squad life is a different. And I think that's just like going back to the original before I ran it. Sorry. But like the chip is just like, I was just always felt like I was undervalued and appreciated. Like I'm like, and people don't know slash don't care what you're really doing behind the scenes unless mm. it affects them. And yes. I'm like, well, I got to make sure that they know like when my opportunity, like, like I said, in college, I wasn't ready for my opportunity, but like when my opportunity comes this time, 
Like, I'm going to be ready. Yeah. And that's why the next year I made the 53. They, like, kept – they cut the fullback. They kept four tight ends. Um, yeah, and then I was on the team ever since. Oh, that's juicy, bro. Um, when you say the undervalue, underappreciated, do you feel like that plays into – when you're going through and getting ahead of yourself this past year? Um, because I would yeah, assume, I, I think I would that's assume where, when, yeah. you're, when you're the man uh, coming off of a year, like, again, that you had in 2020, like, like, and being an undrafted cat, yeah. like, you feel like you've paid your dues and you've built your resume right. to a point to where it was about, the, you know, you sign, the, you sign the restricted tender and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then you get injured. I would assume that negotiating and your, the contract and all that stuff doesn't play out the way you want. I'm not talking greed and all that stuff, but I'm saying, do you feel like that that subconscious in the back of your mind of feeling undervalued and underappreciated? Yeah, and I think that's that what, yeah, that's 100 percent where I think that's where I again like got ahead of myself because I was just like, you know, how much more do I have to prove? But again, they don't have to pay you. I know, man. They don't have to. Which sucks, but, like, when you get it, you're you're at peace with it, but... Yeah, and that's why, like, even, like, I just think also the chip comes with, like, never being satisfied. Like, and I think that's a good thing, is, like, I probably won't ever be satisfied because I don't do it for money. Like, I really don't. Like, again, like, you see me out there, like, I really just have a good time, like, being out there. Like, I think it's so cool that, like, only a few type, you know, a few types of, like, men in this world can get their ass kicked, beat up, and in six days do it again Mm -hmm. for 20-something weeks. Like, that is, like, psychologically, you have to be, like, borderline, like, nuts. And then prepare for it all year round just to have those 20, same 20 opportunities. Right. And I just, like, really was, like, it was just good to like really sit back and understand like why I'm doing this again, instead of getting ahead of and being like, you know, like, fuck this, like I should be doing this, but I, I understood the reality of it, but I was still like, like, what the fuck? Like, why? Right. Like, what else do I have to do? Like I got there, you know, accidentally lead the league in touchdowns at tight end. Like it was a complete accident. Like I wasn't getting game plan to get the football. Oh, okay. Like, I wasn't, um, you know, I had 59 targets and 52 catches. Mm -hmm. Like, like I wasn't getting targeted. It was just, like, coming to me. And, like, and that was the thing. Like, but I was busting my ass for the opportunity that I was going to be ready. And, you know, and that was the thing is, like, a lot of the difference in this league is just opportunity. And that's what, like, was so humbling to me. It's, like, it's just not your turn. It's not your time. And that's okay. Like, I just, like you were saying, like, I really get to step back and just observe. And I'm good at that. Like, I got better at that now. Like, I feel like it doesn't take an injury for me to do that. Any situation in my life, I can really just like, like, dude, I get anxiety before like going out because I just don't like a lot of people that I don't know. Yeah. But now I get to just step back and be like, why do I feel that way? Yeah. Am I nervous about that or you know like just changing your perspective on a lot of things and it just really you know made my mental stronger and like you're saying just like i get to view and like control a lot of perspective stuff just by training your mind and going through adversity instead of like hiding from it like just going right at it and i think i got really good at that and i thought i was good at it before and then like more stuff happened you know on and off the field and I'm just continuing to grow. And I, that's why I'm like smiling internally. Cause I'm like, I can't wait because I don't give a fuck anymore. Like I don't <laughs> like, like I, you can't kill what's already dead. Yeah. Like, dude, I've been dead inside. Like I thought, like I was like, I think I've told you this before. Like I thought I was in hell, like, you know, tearing my core, thought I was going to get cut by the Packers coming back and then having the 2020 season. Mm-hmm. I thought I was dead inside then. No, like, like I truly do not give a fuck anymore. And that's why I can't wait as like. It's like a superhero origin story going on. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, like, but it's good that you have that because it's hard. It's hard to, 
and you you know like we're we're in the locker rooms with all the boys like everybody's kind of got that about them where they can't like release their ego from it or separate themselves yeah. from it because they're so emotionally attached to it. I right. would assume that you were frustrated probably with oh, your negotiation. Oh, I, it wasn't even like the negotiation. I think I was more frustrated with just like the like at the beginning of last year it was just the opportunity, and I just like wasn't understanding at the time clearly what like. You know the timing aspect the of timing it. timing and how much probably you're wrapped up in the identity of it. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, like, like it was like you know, like I, like I wanted to be you know out there like you know getting a touchdown a game again, and I yeah, wanted bro. to be like showcasing my talents and like what I've like worked so hard. Like I work on like my like craft like so much. I work on my negatives. I work I work on my weaknesses, and I just wanted to show that. But like at the time my weaknesses like were like blocking before that, but I was starting to do good at blocking, but I was getting kind of caught up in the, you know, the fantasy football side of it and not, uh, not fantasy football, like actual fantasy football, but like in our head, yeah, like you get caught up, but, in I, like, but then you like, but like, I'd feel like, you know, I didn't do anything, you know, one catch for seven yards and you're like, whatever, you're like, fuck man. Even if you put it, and a then good... I turn on the film and I'm like, damn, I'm really getting after it. Like, but I couldn't, like, at the time, like, it was just a lot of shit going on. And, like I said, like, on and off the field, like, there's just so much shit that I was just trying to, like, whatever. And I just, like, I started kind of, like, reading more into, like, Kobe Bryant stuff lately. Mm. And, like, I think we've talked about this. Um, but, like, George helped me out with this a while ago. It was kind of, like, your alter ego. Just, like, when you step on, like, the football field, like you have an identity that just like is different and like all that stuff is just off. And in 2020, I was so good at it. Like I was so good in 2021. I was just like more like, not like victimizing myself, but more like, fuck, it could be way better. Like yada, yada. And you start placing yourself on uh, like, I know for me, when I was like playing better, getting into my fourth, fifth year and stuff like that, like you feel like you've worked so fucking hard to right. earn certain respects and everything else that, if I look back on it, like some, you start believing some of your own bullshit in your head or like putting right. my own self on a certain pedestal. And if I wasn't getting X amount of tackles a game, like you're saying with catches, like even if I might have played well in a role spot or in a yeah. role opportunity, I'm not seeing it that way because I feel like I'm I like there's some dude that I should be getting that wasn't happening for right. me. And my goal is to become a complete football player. And that's what was happening. And I wasn't even like present and realizing it. And right. that's why, like, I got to step back and be like, Dude, I got better at that. And like I did the, you know, the 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 X amount of touchdowns in 2020 and 2021 I was, you know, becoming a like a good blocker and like now I got to sit back and be like, "Oh, and now this past 8 months was just like my mentality getting tested and my pride, you know, getting tested and all this stuff." So I'm like, "Oh, like you know, the universe is really like trying to make me a complete human being." And now that's why I'm saying, like, I don't give a fuck anymore, like, about anything. Like, I don't care about external bullshit about anything. Like, I care about my value in that locker room. And, like, my, my teammates know. So, right. like, and if we're, trying to, if we're trying to win a Super Bowl and they know, like, what my value is, then let's win a Super Bowl. And then, the, the, like I said, divine timing will take care of itself. And right. that shit will all happen. And accolades or whatever will just come but at the same time that's just not where my career is at currently yeah is it gonna get there yeah but that's not where it's at right now and that's okay but i'm finally in the driver's seat in my career like for the first time ever and like it feels so good and the and coming off an injury like being like fresh and whatever it is and really getting to start from zero like that's why I'm so confident and comfortable because like, I know the work I put in, I knew where I was, you know, how dead inside I was. Like, that's like, I'm like, just like ready to play football because like nothing else matters, but like my, like my teammates. Yeah. Now the process, the, the question I was wanting to, I was wanting to get into earlier when you came on last year and we're talking about the mental side and it's fucking awesome. Yeah. But speak on like how, how consistently and how it's just, the hay is never, I feel like, in the barn with that kind of stuff, with your mental side and that mental fortitude. Yeah. Like you say, 
you don't give a fuck or stuff. The external stuff's not bothering you. That's pr that's present. That's like current right now. Yeah. Or do you feel like you've came up, not came up with, but like read into things or been able to like be mindful enough to know to kind of ready yourself for the season because you know yeah. how the season again can get away from you. Yeah. Not like get away from you just in any respect, but just like you get into the grind of the season, you feel a little sorry for yourself because you're banged up, not externally feeling sorry for yourself, but you just get in the thick of it. You're yeah. around guys who might complain a little bit more. You might the pop on social media. Like yeah. how do you feel like you've grown in that area to make sure and not even make sure, but continue to know like I have to guard myself from this shit. Uh, one, because I thought I was in control last year and I wasn't. And now I like know the difference. And like, I thought like I was going into last year with like the right mindset and like, you know, what we talked about, but like, you have to take that next step every time. Like, I know, like, like you're saying, you're going to hit that point And then next year I'm going to hit another point. Like yeah. everything's, you're always going to be hit with adversities every, every year. And I think it's just like, facing them head on and just like going into them with like a quote unquote positive mindset, but just like more of a growth progressive mindset. And like, you're saying like with those guys that are like complaining more and instead of just like, you know, laughing or like, just like brushing it off, like, you know, it's my turn to be like a leader mm. and like being like, you know, take guys along with me instead of just, you know, like I'm talking about like the teammates and like, that's who I care about. Right. And I need to bring guys along with me more that to my mindset and like my vision and stuff like that. Cause like you're saying, you know, people are like, you know, like man, fuck today. Instead of being like laughing or whatever, or just like, yeah, no, I feel you. It's more like see something, say something. Type you know, of thing. Because like, that's your brother. Like, and instead of just like, kind of like getting uncomfortable and like, Oh, it might be, you know, not cool to, like, also be, like, fuck that. Right, put the pads on on Wednesday for this yeah. Wednesday practice or but something. But, like, fuck it. Like, let's get it. Like, yeah. But, like, we're really trying to compete and, like, win a Super Bowl. And, like, we do have good leaders on that team. We have a great locker room. We have great chemistry. You know, we've been to the NFC Championship three times. Like, what, re what do we really need to break through that last, like, wall to get to the Super Bowl? And I think it's just, like the consistency of staying ourselves like for a longer period of time. Cause like we come out hot, we, you know, we win those close games, yada, yada. And then we get like towards the end of the season and we're just like, man, fuck this. Like, but like we're a 13 and three, 14 and three football team. Like that's our identity. Like we're a winning football program. Like why do we get like down on ourselves? Like, as like time progresses or like the weight of the season gets on us, like that's not us. So me like sitting back and like noticing that last year, like when I was hurt, I stayed there the whole time, like rehabbed in green Bay, did my surgery in green Bay. I got to see that. And what's, what was hard was like, we stopped being ourselves later on in the season. So I think just like the consistency of being ourselves and like staying true to us for a longer period of time, I think that is where like is going to take the next step. And if I notice that, like, like it would be a, I, like, I'm a fool if I don't like say something or like bring someone with me. Mm -hmm. A lot of those guys, like are big time guys and big name guys and leaders of our locker room that also need someone to rely on because like they're relied upon for a bunch of other people, but they need someone. And like, if that's, if that's like my role, like in the locker room is to like be there for like, you know, the, the captains of the team or the, you know, the leaders of the team, like, and I noticed that, like, that's what I want my role to be. Like if, you know, those types of guys need someone to come to, to talk to and me to share a positive light on this, a bad situation or like the pads on a Wednesday, like I'll be the positive vibe. Like I'll smile and like, With the you know, help. Guy. That's fine. But like at the end of the day, like you also know what I'm going to do when we put the, you know, pads on when we get to Sundays like, you know, but off the field, I can be that person for yeah. you. I was going to ask, how do you see your role kind of shifting now that you've kind of established yourself, like, as a Green Bay Packer? And you guys got a lot of pieces that's yeah. been around the franchise I think it's just for like, a long time. Also, just, like, taking my leadership to the next level and just being more, like, just holding more people accountable and holding myself more accountable. Like, I was saying, like, towards the end of the season, like, we just need to... And I'm not saying, like, you know, people are, like, fucking up or like doing stupid shit. I just think that like 
it is. A, it's a long, grueling season. And up in Green Bay, it's tough. You know, you got the winter. It's cold. It's like, it just sucks ass. Like, waking yeah, up and like, yeah, it's a grind. But like, just like reminding people that like who they are and what they bring to the table. Yeah. Like, that can only be beneficial. And I think that just reminding everyone and bringing the longevity of like positivity and like leadership and you know, enthusiasm or whatever, just kind of just bringing it longer, just a couple more weeks. Right. Well, I also think too, like you kind of get that, you kind of get to understand that perspective because you weren't like in the, like say right. December, like you're sitting there sitting back, you're getting rehabbed and everything else you're kind of seeing. And it's, you know, you get it. Like when you're in it, it's just a fucking grind. You don't and even notice. Know going, yeah. You don't even notice. And yeah. then now that you're going into it this year, once you get to that point of the year, like, you know, like you're saying it, there's, there's something that can be, whether it's a spark or right. a conversation with somebody to be like, Hey, like we know we're in the fucking gritty part. Yeah. We've been here th three different times. Like how, yeah. how tough is that knowing that you guys have been yeah. this fucking close every year with Aaron Rodgers and just, you got, you, it's you tough. know, the way everybody holds, lifts up the Green Bay Packers. Right. But once you guys get into that NFC championship, right. although it's a good feed, it's like, what, what's it going to take to get to the Super Bowl? Right. And that, that's the toughest part. And no one wants to hear it from a coach, like, year in and year out. And, right. like, later on in the season, because it's easy for a coach to say it. Like, hey, guys, like, we got to do this, and we got to do this. Like, well, you're not in the – like, you're a part of it, but you're not, like, in it. So it's, like, for me, like you said, I got to sit back and, like, be, like, a, in the coaches, like – Mm. situation where like i'm just seeing everything develop and um you can kind of see how coaches might be moving that way it's like yeah. oh, i can see why they're trying to do it like this right and just kind of you see that's where play comes in for the player ownership where the player ownership well, the best in. teams are player left exactly yeah and, and like those are the times like those are the times of the year where coaches can do as much as they can but if like the players aren't holding up this or aren't holding the standard or holding the front line yeah and your best players and stuff that's where it gets dicey at the end yeah, of the year. I'm not sure. saying that's where you guys are at, but like you're probably seeing from that bird's eye view or the coach side, like I see why he's being like that, but I also see like why he's not going to motivate this player because you're this long in the year and the player don't really care to hear it. But if a player right. were to say some shit right here, yeah. then it's a different, it comes out differently. It's yeah. out of love, dude. Yeah. And that's like the, because like no one on our team is sensitive when we talk to each other, but I just don't think enough like, I think this is across the league and not enough players like talk and like motivate each other because they're like worried about their, you know, their own process right. or their For sure. themselves and stuff like that. And we we're such a close, you know, knit group up there because there's nothing else to do but to hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. So I think that just reiterating and continuing that like longer into the season, like, cause everyone's hanging out and like happy, like, you know, it's summer, it's fall in Lambeau. And then it's like, November and Lambo, and that's that's like Nova, like Lambo Field, and then it gets you know snow, and then the snow games are fun, but then it's like playoffs, and like there's six teams left, four teams left, and we're just like the only ones practicing. That's like a lot of walkthroughs, and it's just monotonous, and it's like we need to like that's the time to take off, right, right, right. Like that's not the time to like plateau out. That's the time to hit another gear and like go. Yeah, and um, and a lot of guys do a great job of it. I'm not talking, you know, negative about any means. I just think that what it, how close we've been and like the same thing kind of happens. It's like, now's the time to like, right now or never. Right. Like, and I mean, the, like the results have already happened. You know right. what I mean? It's yeah. not like you're saying this and it's like, this is what we've done wrong and we're shitty at this. It's results have happened and you've made it certain to it you've made a certain lengths each year yeah and it's like what are we looking at because you have to be able to self-evaluate right and you're just giving a perspective on like you know here's some things i think going into next year that i might be able to do in my within yeah. my role and that's like a great way to put it is like i got to again like view it as a different perspective like not only myself but like the team and i'm very uh socially aware like group aware energy aware you know like when someone walks in a room, like, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. Like, I can feel, like, how they're feeling and stuff like that. And I think I just need to use that as my advantage and in my leadership skills and to become a better leader to 
take that next step for not only me, but to help the team. Because if I, if I notice it and like, I'm good at something, I got to use that to help the team. Absolutely. I'm a fool. Yeah. Uh, speaking of leadership, talk about Mercedes Lewis. He has this reputation yeah. that he's been, how many years has Mercedes Lewis played? I mean, this would be 18, I think. 18 years. He's like one of the oldest players in the league, if not like tied for Tom Brady for being the oldest in the league. But talk about like him and his leadership. Cause I've heard stories like, I've 17 or 18, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, LaFleur has talked about how influential of a leader he is. Like, yeah. everybody who's played with him has talked about him as a leader. Like, speak on his uh, his leadership and, like, what he's meant to you as a growth, not yeah. only as a player, but also probably a person. I mean, like I was saying, like, you don't always want to hear, like, a coach or coaches, like, speak all the time because, like, yeah, like, I mean, your coach is valuable to the team. Yes, I'm not downgrading that, but, like, to an extent, you want to hear someone who's done it. Right. And like, when he talks... Well, coach is he, always on the podium, and they're always saying... Right. The, they're like, always going to say the, you know, not, not to say it's always political, but, the, you know, they're in the best interest of an entire team when they're trying to give an yeah. answer. Yeah, and um, when he talks, people listen. Like, mm -hmm. his demeanor, his voice, what he says, like, it's meaningful, and it has, like, a purpose. It's not just, like, going up there and, like, you know, saying a quote or, like trying to like just give external motivation mm -hmm. it's like really from like what he's done what he's been through and what he sees and like that's what like being around him like from when i got there like at like what 23 years old i felt like i've matured like 10 years over like you know whatever time i was with him because when he talks like i just listen and because like he cares about me and i know that just like for what we talk about and, you know, what he's done for me on and off the field, um, you know, showing me, you know, things I haven't ever experienced, like from a, like a little, you know, small farm town in Illinois and he's from like L.A. Mm -hmm. You know, he just got to like, he just made sure I've experienced stuff that I wouldn't get to experience in, in the right way. And, and that's like... He's meant so much, like, that is, like, the most influential person, like, with football that I've ever been around. Like, really? for me. Like, like, our talks, like, we're, like, when, like we'll say, like, what's up in the here and there, and, like, but, like, our conversations are never, like, wasted or surface level, like, ever. And that's, like, the best part about it. Like, there's no small talk with me and Sadie's. It's, everything's meaningful. And that's, like, the best, and it's every day. So it's not just like, oh, hey, what's up? You know, what'd you do last night? Oh, okay. It's never that. It's like, hey, how's your mom doing? Well, how's your mom doing? You know, like, what is, you know, what are you going with? Or what are you dealing with, like, off the field? Or how's this? Or how's this situation? I don't want to get into, like, too much, like, personal right, stuff right, right, between right. us two. But, like. But it's not small talk. You guys are having, like. It is always deep. And, like, every Wednesday, it would be me, him, and our tight ends coach at the time, J.O. He's the OC in Denver now. Um, Every Wednesday, we'd sit down when they were doing special teams, and I'd just go in there, and we would just talk, like, real-life shit. And, like, every Wednesday, it was basically, like, a cry session, like, of us just pouring shit yeah. out. Because, like, you need it. Because, like, no one externally outside the building truly gives a fuck what you're feeling. They're just, like, like I'm saying, how many stats are you doing? Yeah, are you winning a, the it's games? performance-based business. Yeah. But, like, that was, like, so good for us, and that's why we're – we got so close over the years too is just because we talk about real ass shit and real ass, you know, things that we're going through or thinking. And I'm not afraid to ask him any question and he's not afraid to like, give me the truth. And for him to be at where he is in his career. Oh yeah. Rain. Um, little adversity. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't, I didn't deserve what he was giving me at the beginning. Like I even like felt like I'm not even deserving of this guy's time, but he saw something in me. Sounds cliche, but like, he was like, you know, people don't move like you at your size. Like telling me that like people aren't as, you know, people can't stretch the field like you. People don't have the, the will and the urge to be great. Like you do, like you want to be great. Like there's a lot of people who are just like in the league to be in the league. Like, you're really trying to be great. And I'm like, yeah, I am. Like, how'd you even notice that? But, like, that's how, like, we, you know, we feel each other out and we, you know, 
understand each other. And last year, like one of the talks that stuck with me that like really made me just like, honestly, like, like break down and for him to break down was like, there was two things he said to me. He said, for us, like he said, I've never felt more like close to a person, like as like relatable as like a quote unquote twin than you. And like this dude's six, eight, obviously me and Mercedes do not look alike, <laughs> but like for, he what said, do you mean by that? <laughs> but like, you know, for him to be like, like we operate the same, like internally and like, he, you know, him coming from, you know, Polly, you like right. LA and me, you know, coming from where I'm from, like, we don't have the same, you know. Well, even the age gap too. Like when right. you're an old, when you're like an older, just vet. Yeah. You kind of just, you, you do your thing, you do all your processes, you yeah. get them to probably a, f- a big family. Yeah. But that's just what I did. I just, yeah. did, I, and I, I, we were there late. We, you know, I adapted the recovery process. Like he helped me with my recovery process. Like we get like have the same schedule like that. And it's just like, he's like, I've never related to someone in the football sense, like on the football field, like I do you. And just by like kind of chance, you know, and that meant a lot to me. That was at the end of last year. That was after my injury. But during the season last year, he said, he said the first time in my life, I'm content with being number two. And I was like, whoa. And that's a dude who's, you know, pro bowl, 17 years, done everything, Mm -hmm. 13 years in Jacksonville, you know, made this amount of money, you know, taking care of his mom, like, that like that's what like you know sharing that same like passion and love for like our mothers and like our wives and stuff like that and like he said i'm content with being number two for the first time in my life like i love sitting back and just watching you play football and have fun and like do your shit and just like go yeah and it's like he said i'm gonna go on the field i'm gonna put my hands on someone for you and i was just like whoa Mm -hmm. and that's like when i really was like this shit really means more than just like wins and losses, like cliche again, right. but like it does. Like he really gives a fuck about me. And I was like, and that's like the, the bond that like, you, there's no monetary value for that. Like, you know, you can go elsewhere and play and get a check or what else or wherever, but like that value and that like bond, like, when we're in 12 personnel and like me and him are next to each other, like we look at each other and we just know like it's on. Yeah. And there's no like gray area with us. Like we're over, over on the side, like he's, you know, teaching me like pass sets, run game stuff, but then it like goes to the field and it works. Like it happens. And like when we're in 12 personnel, like we know like that's the shit, like we're there for each other. There's no, hesitant like we're just going because like we know each other and we know and that's you do go that extra step for someone you love and that's why it's so cool to have that relationship with everyone and have that you know bond in green bay like that because we do like go the extra step for everyone but Sadie's is just like he's done so much like for me like my mentality and like he helps me with that too like that's Mm -hmm. the number one guy that's just like helped me on and off the field and like you know you know, he sees me running around, you know, being young. He goes, you know, you make me feel young because, like, yeah. I'm trying to, like, chase, like, a young, you know, that's a young good, horse that's a around. That's a compliment to hear, though, by the way, from, like, a vet. But so it's like, oh, bro, you make me feel young again. You're like, yeah. fucking good. I mean, and he's dope. Like, he, you know, he, and he doesn't need me to make him feel young. Like, he's, he's dope. Like, you know, his swag, his style, his, like, interests, like, his vibe. Like, he is young. You know, you know, he's L.A. Right. But physically and football for me to be like you know running around and you know he's chasing me around and like you know running routes and i'm hyping him up and when he's gonna touch on and practice for the game like you know who the first person is gonna be there right and like vice versa and that's why like after i score like that's low-key the first person i'm looking for because i'm like you know like celebrate with the boy man yeah like because like he truly like honestly has meant the most to me in my football career like hands down that's awesome that's really cool to hear um, I want to talk about the unicorn, the uh, mysterious creature that everybody's always worried about, that everybody's always wondering what he does in his off seasons, oh. that he's on the Pat McAfee show like every Monday or Tuesday. Um, 
he's just got everyone's just always extremely concerned about Aaron Rodgers. What's it like playing with A Rod? What's he like in the locker room? Like, what's he like as a leader? What's your guys' relationship like? Talk about him a little bit, and then also I would love to get into his new tattoo. <laughs> um, the, uh, can I just start with a tattoo? Because yes, I just yeah, want to say that, that because we were joking about tattoos one time. Like, we were just eating dinner or, or lunch at the table or whatever, and we were just talking about tattoos or whatever. I think we were low-key talking about Preston Smith's tattoos. I'm really? dead serious because he, uh, he got, like, a cool, like, uh, like a devil and angel tattoo, like whispering in his ears, and like you know, A Rod like can't keep his mouth shut, so he had to like flame Preston or whatever. Dude, that is hilarious. I have a just side note. Keep your thought. I have a photo that 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 photo right there. Hang on, go back. Top left. That's from me. That is on my phone. He posted that on Snapchat one dude, time. Dude, tattoo season. I, I like, grabbed it. I love P. Bro, to Preston death. is. I fucking love awesome. P to death. He's the. He is. He is. <laughs> He is a bright spot. In, yeah, like that's, it's dope. But he's a bright spot in our locker room. Like he is a good, like he he's is, a good time. He's like, like a good vibe. He's always wearing the most fashionable stuff you can find. I remember his rookie year. He'd have the, the spike shoes. Like every, like a new pair. He's always. Well, when you come to Green Bay, we'll get him right. Yeah, he's always we'll fully right, for suited, sure. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to, uh, we got to get Preston on the bus. Love I Preston. love Preston though. But anyway, you guys were talking about the tattoo. He had the devil and the angel. Um, he rod flamed him. And now A-Rod's got his Illuminati. Yeah, so picture. he was like, you know, he was like, We're cre- I'm in the process of creating one. And I'm like, okay. Aaron said that? Yeah, this was a while ago. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, he's going through, you know, he didn't tell me about it because like, he was like, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of like, it's, you know, like when he like, when something's important to him, it's like dramatic in a good way. The deepest. It's the yeah, deepest. it's like, listen, <laughs> you know, and like. Let me talk to you first. He's like. You know, he really tries to make you like buy in. Mm-hmm. And the and I'll get later on into when our month, me and his Monday, me him and Alan Lazar's Monday night hangouts, like our deep talks by the fire. It's so funny. But so he was like, I was like, where are you gonna get it? And he like went into you know a deep description, kind of a whatever, and he just goes right here, man. And I'm like, that's bold. And I didn't believe him, like zero. So I totally forgot about it because, you know, like A-Rod talks like certain things and he says some things, whatever. Next thing I know, like, what, a couple, like a month ago, it just popped up. And that's dope, by the way. Yeah. How, so how long are we saying that this tattoo has has been worked on? Oh, a year or more, probably. Like, oh, oh, like. You're uh, saying, you're saying by the time he's, you're saying this thing's been in the process for a while. Yes, for sure. And, but when he said it was going to go right in his farm, I was like, yeah, you're lying. No chance. Right here. And and then next thing you know, right, right on the forearm. What does it all mean? Do we know? Well, I can't wait to like learn about it. Cause I mean, I haven't been with him in person since, but. Is there anything on there that might uh, trigger? Well, I mean, that's like, you know, the birth chart and the stars. It's probably, you know, like when he was born, like how the stars were and. Some correlation of star. Yeah, that guy, that artist, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's well thought out. There's a story, and I can't wait. The waves, you know, he's told me stories about, you know, the ocean and the waves, that what, what they mean to him. So I am, you know, I feel like, you know. we can get him on the bus. The sun, you know, I feel if I'm guessing, and I don't want to be wrong, so don't take my correct or my full word for it, but, you know, you have like a, you know, uh, you know a rising sign and, you know, a, a moon sign. Mm. And I'm guessing that's like the lions back and forth. One's his dark side and one's his like calm side. I think it's dope though. Okay. Hey, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's dope, but it's just funny because like I'm going to have the MVP quarterback under center on Sunday night football with a hippie tattoo on his forearm right here. That's because your first touchdown celebration. Just right here. <laughs> But, uh, no, he, like, he is... Yeah, what's it like playing with him? I mean, arguably the GOAT. Yeah, and there's nothing more than two-minute drill with him. Like, I, like, that's when I love playing with Aaron the most. He is the best at it, and he, like, makes it look easy. But his demand for, not perfection, but, like, he wants you to be thinking how he's thinking. And obviously, we're not going to be thinking how he's thinking. 
because, like, you know, he's out there. I mean, you look at his tattoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's fucking in the deep like, water, man. I really, like, love being challenged by him because he, like, again, like, he's a person who knows, like, I want to be great. And, like, two minute when, like, when shit is, like, flying, like, defenses are flying around. They're not set. Um, you know, he's rushing the line. He's throwing out signals. He's looking this way. He throws up a signal and snaps the ball, and you're over there. Like, you got to know. But it does come with, like, time playing with them. But I love playing with them because it's a challenge. And it's not like, hey, this is the play we're running today, da-da-da. It's like, now listen. Like, and then he explains, like, the reason why. And it's like, that's how I think. Why are you guys in the huddle or are we talking in practice? Both. Both. Everything. Like, you, you'll, I mean, a lot of the two-minute drives are made up plays just fyi like so you can't game plan for aaron and two minute drill that's unreal you just gotta buckle up you just gotta buckle the fuck up you do and that's like the best part about playing with them is you know that and you have that edge on someone so that's why you have to be more dialed in because you really you don't even know so that's why you just got to really tap into like what's going on but does he have a really calm demeanor in the huddle like when you always. guys are in these high pressure moments always and that's why it's so calm for us and that's like a good thing. And you know, he, I mean, he has a fire in him. Like when shit's like when he, you know, when shit's going good or shit's going, like he demands, he demands like mm -hmm. whatever it is. I, and I don't want to say perfection because like the word perfection is just whatever. But he really is so fun to play with because uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, yeah, he's great, and it's, like, awesome to be, like, with a great quarterback because, right. you, know, you know, it's easy, but it's just, like, it's a challenge, and I like a challenge, and it's wild. It's really wild to be in the huddle with him when you look, when like, when you sit back and you're like, right. what the hell did we just go through? But it's, like, it becomes second nature because you've played with him so much or, like, you get reps with him, and it's fun because he really, like, gives a fuck about you like he really gives a fuck about you and that's the best part How, what, what do uh i see aaron Rodgers' new girlfriend we have on the thing i don't know anything of, about her i don't know anything about her just 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 start making shit up well but, i think people do say shit like that yeah. but um like off the field stuff like me him and alan hang out uh every monday and we just like order pizzas and watch the monday night football game and sit out by his fire and we just talking like that's what i'm saying like you just grow and you get to know people dude fire fire pit vibes we were talking about that not too long ago you just you know he's probably gonna be like you know whatever wait what's he gonna say should we cut that out no okay keep that shit in <laughs> but like you I know you know he's on, on you know he's on mcafee i'm on here that's what i'm saying yeah would you think he'd be down to come on the bus we had the bus out in green bay 100 percent. would you co-host it and i sit right here yeah i would love he for you to right there yeah okay good and then get no, in, I depth, just, and get in I, depth about his tattoo. Hey, teach us all about the tattoo. Maybe he already has on the map. No, he's just, dude, I, in the classic, like, I don't want to say, like, he's just perceived by so much external bullshit. Bro, I know. He's an asshole or whatever. But why? Like, is he really hurting you or affecting you? You know how everybody wants their star quarterbacks in the NFL to be? Right. I mean, not but really. He's different. But and that's fine. That like, there is. The media, there's, like, this perception of how each player has to be for the public eye right i think he does get so many opinions out there um and i don't want to like i was thinking about asking you but i'll just figure if, if if aaron will come on then we can ask him when aaron's on here because we have him talk about it you can see that being like a yeah i don't want to like, like headline yeah i just don't want to like obviously like, i don't, don't want to speak for why there's so many opinions on aaron Rodgers. yeah no and i think it's just mostly because yeah i don't want to speak for anyone but i just honestly think it's because he is great at what he does, and he does it in a non-traditional fashion. Yeah. And people don't like – it's just an easy headline to bash him. Absolutely. And that's what sucks is like – And Aaron Lowkey Aaron, Aaron Low doesn't give like traditional media much time. Right. kind of just like doesn't give – he's kind of got that I don't give a fuck mentality yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, unapologetically. There you go, Bloss. And he – um, dude, and, you know, there is stuff like, – every person has stuff to work on. Like, he's not perfect, but he has such a good heart. Like, he really gives, like, he's player first to the death of him. Like, he gives a fuck about the team and the players and, like, all that. And, you know, 
like I said, everyone has stuff to work on or like get better at or people don't like this, yada, yada. But like at the end of the day, this dude has a like a good heart and he's good at football. So you're saying he's he great, does want to win a Super Bowl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying he does want to win football games? <laughs> yeah. And and again, I think like the quote unquote, you know, misunderstood is, you know, I think that's the classic. He's just misunderstood from the external eye. But like everyone in the building, like in the locker room, knows and cares and like understands right. him but it's just weird that everyone outside doesn't but that's the only voice that people they hear try their matters. best to figure out the narrative on it which is yeah why you get all the storylines and right. everything else what do we got boys should we get into tear talk hey hang on but before well, hang on what do you got jack uh is that it yeah madden just released the rankings today or my or Madden 23. Yeah. That boy, that boy is a 53, and I'm going to go get you, and I'm going to put you on my practice squad. You're fucking right, yeah. baby. Just pay me my money. Uh, but they also, <laughs> they just tweeted out like 30 minutes ago the top tight ends for catching, and our boy's number two slotted, so. Hell yeah. Ooh, a 96 catcher rating? Hell yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm like probably. You feel like that's valid? Yeah, that, no, that's valid. I mean. Travis Kelsey's better than you? We're tied. But, the, you know, smart man, smart man. But yeah, I mean, I don't even know. Yeah. Again, I don't care. So I don't even want to ask. Ooh, George, question. 91 tough look. But like, yeah, I probably I'm probably like outside the top 20 and like overall tight ends. Come on. What it do does. Do we know his overall rating? We can go back to it. Uh, his overall rating, I think, was an 80 right here. So you would say you're, you you think that's pretty uh, spot on being five points ahead of George Kittle for the catcher rating? Yeah, because he's probably, like, a bunch ahead of me for, like, blocking. We're just trying to keep this on catcher rating. Yeah. And George... That's our headline. George, George, um, <laughs> George told me I have some of the softest hands. Hey, yo, so, George, you were supposed to be the one on, uh, you were, um, were you supposed to be the one on for Tight End You podcast? Oh, we want to show you? Uh, no, it was just, well, kind of, yeah. Uh, I wish George would have been here. So yeah, no, he, same. So he could hear I would noise. like to say this, though. It was funny because I haven't even brought it up to George or joked about it, but I joked about it to you about Kittle Fest. So yeah. I want to say it as a funny joke. So he hit up me and TJ, and he was like, yo, like, hey, are you getting on the bus? I'm like, yeah, I was going to do a solo with Will. And he's like, well, I'm trying to get on with you and TJ because I want to promote tight end you. I was like, just let me know. And like three days later... You see us tweeting about Josh and George. You know, George and Josh Allen pull up in the Sadies. Like, I'm like, I mean, I, I don't care, but I just want to say, you know, I just want to, ex- I just want to <laughs> hey, expose George. You know, like, George. Like, I don't care, but you know, I was just. Yeah, you know. That's I just, thought, you that's know, it's like I thought we were best friends. <laughs> <laughs> that's like uh, fucking bro stuff right there. Like, you know, I don't care, but also, you know, I should have been the one on here. No, but no. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's super cool how you. It's crazy how you invited me over to your house. I don't get a call, and I see a lot of people come over to your house. <laughs> I saw all the bikes out front. That's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you live out there. You live out there. Yeah, yeah. So you live out in uh, we. We won't say exactly where unless you want to disclose that information. What well, you just said it. Um, <laughs> you just said it. Well, your actual address. But hey, being out in Kittle Fest, like y'all live out there. Yeah. And some stuff goes down apparently. Yeah. You had a nice. You had a nice story. Yeah. Would you care to share on the podcast? If I may, is it? Yeah, floor is open. I think yeah. this is an incredible story. Yeah, I just didn't know if it was, you know, promote How about your mansion and pool and stuff. It was, if it's promoting, you know, um, no, not at all. Because I'll tell mine too. The guy at the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I was out there, out back by the pool. Chef Dave was grilling, cooking it up. So we were just outside enjoying the stars, like out in like it's no, like it's. Pitch black, it's nothing. It's like the best skies. Like, yeah, no one's going to bother no you out there. There's no street lights. There's nothing. I'm in the middle of nowhere. So we're just out there, like, enjoying, talking, whatever. And all of a sudden, I see 14 cop cars. Like, this was, like, in a time where, like, the trees... I'm surrounded by trees. So, like, the trees weren't bloomed yet. So I just saw through, like, the woods to, like, my dr- like at the end of my driveway. I see, like, four, 14 cop cars. Like, I'm dead serious. There's a, a lot of cop cars. Pull right up through. And I was like, damn, like going on up there so i was like you know grab chef dave and we're like we'll just walk up you think you did something wrong at this point no i just was like again like i'm in the middle of nowhere like what's really going on out here i'm fresh this is my first year in the house i'm like i don't know what's going on so i'm like 
I'm gonna be a homeowner though. I'm gonna go up there and see what's going on. Like I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna just stand on my territory. You yeah. know, this is my this is my you know my yard. Um, so I walk up. My driveway is like you know 300 yards long. So I'm walking up in the pitch black, like again walking with yeah. Just do you have a robe on? No, that would have been awesome. But I <laughs> I walk up there and as I'm getting closer, I I see like a regular car at the end of my driveway, like just pulled into the front. Surrounded by all the cop cars? The cop cars are in a line, and then I see an ambulance as I walk around, and then I see an ambulance, too, and then a, a, a car, and it has, like, a bunch of shit in it, like, stuffed in the windows, you know, like a car, like a little car, but, like, had a bunch of shit in it. Yeah. So as I'm getting closer and closer, I'm like, oh, shit, this car is in my driveway. I'm getting closer, and then all of a sudden, the cops, like, turn to me and all flash their lights at me, like, super quick. And, like, I just, like, Hey man, this is my crib. Like, what? Like, what's going on? Like, just trying to just like see yeah, I'm what, trying to figure out what's going on. This is my property. Yeah, whatever. Trying to be a homeowner. Yeah, and okay, um, my HOAs. <laughs> and a cop that pulled me over like three days before back there because I had Illinois plates, I had tins, I was speeding. He's like, "You checked all boxes. I had to pull your ass over." I'm like, "No doubt." Yeah, like I didn't even say anything. I was like, "Yeah, that's on me." I was just Did you get a ticket. No, because I was like, hey, I was just... Packer fan. Um, his wife was a Packers fan. And that's how he was like, oh, my wife's a huge Packers fan. I was like, what a compliment. Just based off of your ID or did well, you he show was him like, the Wikipedia? So show- <laughs> you see, Man, you, laugh, Google hey, you laugh at that. No, because that's I'm about to tell you. Taylor did one time when we got pulled over. Come on. Didn't he? he, he that's what he does. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He'd be like, ah, oh, you know, I don't have my ID on me. He's like, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to show you. He's got his Wikipedia page Come pulled on. up. All right, say, come on. So, um, no, but yeah, for that, so that story, whatever, I give him my ID. He's like, how do I know you? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be that guy. Like, I was speeding, too, so I was like, yeah. whatever. So I was like, I don't know. And he was like, let me see your tints. And I rolled them up. He's like, those are illegal. I'm like, yeah, I have them for work just for privacy reasons. He's like, what do you do for work? And I was Ooh. like, uh, I work up in Green Bay. And he's like, that's how I know you. And he's like, my wife's a huge Packers fan. I'm like, great compliment. And I was like, hey, I was just coming home from workouts. I was cruising because I was just like having a good time. Nice weather, windows open. I was just... Vibes were high. Yeah, I was just cruising. And I was like, I just let it get away from me. He's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, just make sure you get your license changed. That's when I had my Illinois, all that stuff. So all the stuff's changed now. Three days later. Right. uh, And then three days later. So then I pull up and he's like, oh, Mr. Tony, sorry for the disturbance. Like, I'm like, what's going on? Like, I see some lady, like, hugging this dude, like, oh, I missed you. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, crying. I'm like, this is way too much for me right now. It's like 11 at night or 10 at night, maybe. And he, like, pulls me aside. He goes, all right, listen, you know, this guy just got out of jail. Uh, He was in the passenger seat, was, you know, was shooting up, you know, the good stuff, I guess. Shooting up heroin. Shooting a heroin, <laughs> and I was like, "Just got out of jail. Just got Already out of jail for it. heroin." Then he's in, you know, doing this now. He started ODing, I guess. Well, he did OD, and his girlfriend was panicking, was freaking out. Got was got turned around back in my area, trying to get out of my na- like my area. And like I said, like I'm in the middle she of nowhere, lost out there. So she got lost, and so she pulled over in the end of my driveway to call the ambulance. So he was like, "Yeah." So he, um, so we just resuscitated him. We know whatever they stick him with. I can't remember if, Sorry. yes. And he's back, and we're just gonna send him back to jail. So no big deal. And I'm like, no big deal. I'm like, wait, so that guy, like super chill. I was like, so that guy was dead 10 minutes ago and now he's standing right there. Yep. And I'm like, I'm going back inside. (laughs) Next morning I was out there with Sage waving it. Like, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like no bad energy, no bad vibes. I'm not going to have a dead dude at the end of my driveway. And every time I drive out. I have to go through that shit. Yeah, now so he's I was back just in jail at the end. for heroin. Yeah, so I was just honestly just hitting him with the hit, hitting it with the sage at the end of the driveway, letting it burn, and just and no problem since. Dude, so a few days ago, I was in that gas station that I shit on on the Shane Gillis podcast. <laughs> I walked in like 
And uh, I was filling up my tank, and I needed to I needed to take it too, for whatever reason. I don't know why I didn't wait to get home or wherever I was going. But I was like, well, let me just check this out. And I wouldn't advise like taking it too in any kind of gas station. But when you gotta go, you gotta go. So I go in, and this is a small bathroom stall. I'm talking a urinal, a stall, and a small fucking room. Right when you walk in, you can see the door to the stall and the and the toilet sideways. So you know how you can see the crack right when you walk in. And so you could kind of see the person's legs right away. And you kind of just see him, like, he's, like, leaned up forward. And I'm thinking, what the fuck's going on here? And you can, like, see his shirt and everything. And you see this, like, long tube, I think it is, or a straw or something. And, so uh, much we know. We don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> know. Know, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there and, like, you know, I kind of act like I'm taking a piss just to get a sense. It's like, is this dude in there shitting? Or is he going to be quick? Or I don't know. And he's kind of just sitting there, and you kind of hear his, like, feet go a couple of times. And I get up and just start washing my hands. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. And I kind of, like, get nosy. I'm kind of, like, leaning to look around. And this motherfucker's got something, like, to his, to his mouth, smoking heroin, I guess. Like, getting hair, I thought the heroin was, like, you put the thing around and you do the injection. But maybe you can, so maybe it's he's smoking crack. But he's just sitting there having a situation in the, in the stall. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting the fuck out. And he, like, and he, like, looked homeless. Like, he was, like, a junkie fucking in there getting high. And so I left, and this is the question. And this is the question I wanted to ask you yeah. guys. Will's when we're, talking from an outside perspective. Was you? What's up? Oh yeah, you. in there just getting <laughs> your ten. Hey, your ten. But um, so like, yeah, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here and just roll it over wherever I was going. I don't even remember. I don't even remember what my mission was. But my question, to you guys, I wanted to ask. I'm like, I'll say it for the pod. Is part of me was like, should I tell the gas station employee that someone's in there just getting high? But then I thought to myself, oh, nah, I'm being a fucking tattletale. But then I'm thinking like, you know, a business owner would want some junkie in there getting high. I didn't say anything, but what would you guys have done? I do. I mean, yeah, it's not your business. Do your thing, I guess. Right. <laughs> that's right. That's, I mean, that's a fair point. You, I was saying this. Yeah. I was like, you do, you do want to maybe, you know, help that guy and like you know save his life but then the day like he's gonna do his thing no i wasn't one to save the dude at all i, I was more no, no, thinking like no no i'm saying but like I was more thinking like, like me who has a good heart i'm like you know i don't i wouldn't want that guy to od and die for sure for sure hey man you got a minute <laughs> hey have you ever talked to the lord <laughs> <laughs> just knock on the door you think stan someone wants to take a shit yeah have you ever talked to the lord sir oh my gosh but i'm thinking like from a business owner perspective like it you know if i want somebody to tell me hey there's a junkie in there getting getting high right now you know what i mean yeah i'd probably just leave that one alone yeah I you did, did the right thing I don't, thank you i appreciate that <laughs> comment hey comment in the comment section <laughs> right <laughs> no, sh- yeah. yeah, no free shout outs to those two guys though for shooting up heroin. Though. Yeah, yeah, no, no free, free shout outs to those dudes at all. <laughs> okay, hey, so you also had beef to pick before we get into our tier talk. Beef. Rob texted me. This was back when we were getting a lot of traction with the burger talk, and then maybe another tier talk conversation. When Taylor was talking shit on Chick Fil A, yeah, I would love for him to be here for that. I Come know. on, that's so trash, dude. So, what does he, he have goes, against? He goes, when I get home, I want to get back on the bus because I got to talk to both of y'all about some of your guys' selections and tear talk. Now, we haven't spoken like we haven't spoken about the tear talk since then. What would you like to say to us about about that? Yeah, about what you say our, about? Oh, you hated In and Out, right? Yeah, I should smack the fuck out of you. Oh, hey, take it easy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But 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 I for real, smack the living fucking dog shit out of you, dude. <laughs> no, but like, you went into it with a negative mindset. You wanted In and Out to be bad before you ate it. That's a terrible perspective to go so into. He didn't listen Pers- to the podcast. Perspective is reality. He didn't, he didn't listen to the podcast, dude. I get hype every time I go to In and Out. This last year, I've taken it upon myself to go on this journey of figuring out what burger I actually love the most because I'm easily influenced. I love like a lot of shit. I'm one of those guys who can go into any movie and I'll walk out and be like, man, that shit was awesome, right, boys? And everybody be like, no. Um, but same with like food. I love all food. And I think every burger is fucking awesome. Like so, if I'm around Texas guys. I do guys, like burgers. If I'm burgers. around Texas guys, I'm like, hey, what a burger. That shit's fire. Yeah. If so I, you just want to hype up the group. So you're not really yourself. You're well, just no, what the group I love wants food. So I love the burgers. I love the burgers. <laughs> but I love nothing more than to kind of start some shit amongst the fellas in yeah. the locker room when you got Texas okay, and Cali so in there. What, I'm like, hey, in and out's kind of trash, right, boys? And Texas right. guys, and they start arguing, and then you walk off and go take a shower. 
So but you're I'm, a scumbag. <laughs> and now I texted you that. I said, I, I think you're just no, a scumbag. No, 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 no. So listen. You got some good tea. And I All right, go ahead. You. They're fake. <laughs> so um, if you listen to the pod, this past year, when I decided to, like, I'm going to be intentional about trying these burgers for real. Because when I played in Oakland, couldn't wait to go to In-N-Out Burger. Right. And I'm loving it with the fellas. I'm like, yeah, this shit fucking rips, boys. I do think it's a good burger. Okay, what don't you like about it? I don't think it's great. I don't think, and I, again, I've explained this it's in great detail. Food. It's not a gourmet burger. I'm not, we're not sitting here trying to chase gourmet burgers. Now, if you want five guys, that'll talk to you a little different. Five guys is fucking fire. Yeah. Elite. Five guys is up there. Yes. I'm not, yeah. So I, when I try the in and out burger, the consistency from the, from the butt, from the bun that goes down into the ingredients. Yeah. Breaks right before you get to the edge. I like mine a little more of like a, a buttered style bun to where you get some mush that goes down into your bite. Yeah. Nothing that breaks right before you get to the ingredients. And to me, that is where in and out How do you, what do you, can you tell me your order at in and out So I just. Double, double. That's it. Well, I get double, double. You get fries. Yeah. Animal no, style. No, they get fucking. Well, you get soggy. fries animal style, right? Yeah. So Which they get soggy. Oh, what are you going to say? So you don't get them well done? No, no, no. I'm talking about the burger. We're talking about Sorry, the burger. I'm projecting. Easy. Yeah, I'm projecting. That yeah. is on me. <laughs> I, okay. So you can go. I think you should go next time you go. Okay. You should get a, you know, three by three. See, triple, I will never do that in my fucking life. I used to do four I by four. I will never do it in my life. But get the animal style on the burger. So all those ingredients. What do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> um, get the animal style on the burger. I Listen, I think In-N-Out is good. No, do I'm, I play a villain against yeah, And that's what I was trying In-N-Out to tell you. I think Internet? you were just, yes. yeah, that's because the thing. Because part of you, like, when you're arguing with your boy, like, when I'm arguing with Taylor and he, like, sh- tries to shit on five guys or something else, there's like, a, there's, like, a war going on. It's more of, like, a long game. And then when the right. Internet starts to be on somebody's side, you got to start using so that So you're fuel. just creating conflict. But pe- yeah, but if people who nice. actually, the tier ones out there who <laughs> listen to the pod, they already know that this conversation was had. Right. What's on social media? Like, that's just a different game. Right. You know and what I mean? You yeah, know, the no, game. I get that. I get that. But you to also want to give good. Great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not out here saying like In N Out is the best burger, but like what you were perceiving it, you were acting like In N Out was trash. And that's why I was like, come on, man. I, 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 I understand that angle. You have like such a good platform and you're just using it for the wrong reasons. No, I think that was a good I'm just hill kidding. to die on. I think that was a really good hill to die on because you have five, five guys. guys. Is gas though, like gasoline, like Shake Shack. Shake Shack's up there too, but In and Out's up there too. And a McDonald's double quarter pounder cheese smacks too. You are not wrong about that. I love all burger. I'm with you, like, but I don't even think there's a bad burger. Like, I wouldn't even be able to do a tier with that. I'm dead serious. Yeah. Because they're all like, that, but I'm thinking about one situation. Remember when we went to that Dairy Queen, and that thing okay, was like, okay, that, that, that tomato was like this thick, and then it was just like all mayo. Like, hey, the workers back there didn't even look like they should be back there making burgers, right? But that obviously plays into it. Yeah, that. But I am. Yeah, DQ doesn't count. Come on. Hey, but DQ, you know them them chicken tenders with the country gravy and that Texas toast. Talk to them. That's like that, then you can go to Sonic. Might as well go to Sonic. Sonic is I think Sonic's a, a solid burger as well. But you are right. I'm with you on that. There's like I love them all. Damn the Chick Fil A the Chick Fil A thing did upset me though. Please please speak your truth, King. What so what did Taylor not like about it? <laughs> I'm that was so far back. I got I, rid of the negativity, remember. and now I got to re. Taylor's thing about Chick Fil A is he says it's trash. It's the worst chicken sandwich. But his story and background on it is that was his fast food after all the games. Yeah. So yeah, you got to have it like warm, or you got to have it like fresh, like sitting there to get like you're saying, like to get. I like, agree with you. Like you're saying like I'm gonna go out and find like the best burger, or, or yeah. you like, or really get like a good. Yeah, Chick Fil A. I was I was the same way. Like. You get it after every game. You have like it's like cold and watery. The yeah. thing soggy. Ours the, was raising canes, the, which people love canes. Oh, canes. And I do agree that canes is great, but it was something I had all the yeah, time out no, of Nebraska. Canes is, yeah, and that's what made me bad about Taylor's arguments is like he goes hard when he's against something and calls it trash and like yeah. really hurts my feelings. <laughs> and uh, but when you you haven't truly like tried the 
give it a shot. Like, okay, I understand why you might not like it, but go to Chick Fil A for real. Yeah, and order something that you fries, might like. Like when, so he was probably saying their fries were soggy. He was probably saying the bun was soggy. The pickles are whatever. Like, go and then go order without pickles. Like, what are right. you talking about? Go order a fresh, spicy chicken sandwich, no pickles. Add pepper jack cheese. Put some Chick Fil A sauce on that. He's, he's speaking. Dunk the waffle he's fries. Right there. In the Polynesian sauce and get like one of those frozen lemonades, just quit talking. And then just tell them to quit talking. The Chick-fil-A sauce hits too. On the spicy chicken sandwich though. Yeah, I and agree. Polynesian with the fries. Uh, but I like to dabble them with my fries. I yeah, oh no, fries can go into anything. I'm just, you know, speaking from the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. One thing I will say that I haven't given credit out there to is the service, the customer service with yeah. Chick-fil-A that I think is A+. plus. I also feel the same way about in and out because I think they run yeah. it like that as well. The, yeah, they're great service. Like, they make the burgers fresh, like, right there. They're not I know, sitting that's there all the, day. I give them my everything, except I think the taste of the burger is not number one. It's not, you know, it's not really top three. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would love to think about that one more. Do it. Now, now, that, you, now that we've had this conversation, start going into every burger meal. Like, I'm going to intentionally see yeah. what's up, see what I love. guys... It's just like for Five Guys, you can't have it. What's good about Five Guys is you don't have it a lot because it's so like right. greasy and stuff. So like when you do have it, you're like, all right, that's up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I agree. All right. We're taking a minute away from the episode to bring you guys Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, and dines out. So pretty much every listener, tap in with this. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to the boys at Upside. To get started... Download the free Upside app, use my promo code BUSSIN, and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's 50% off on your first purchase. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in. Check in at the business. Pay as usual with a credit or debit card and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Again, when comparing it to credit card rewards programs or the, their loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with the boys at Upside. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars each and every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. That is monumental. Download the free Upside app and use promo code BUSTIN to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Again, that's that 50% discount that we're offering you right here and now. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code BUSSIN. Now, I say 50%. That's if you spend $10, you'll get $5 back. Now, if you spend $500, I cannot guarantee that you'll be getting $250 cash back. So keep that in mind and don't trust me when I say 50%. Back to the episode. All right, but our tier talk this week is going to be best chain. Sandwich shops. Best sandwich change na nationally now. Don't we can't pick local stuff. I know. I, when you guys were talking about the beer, and I think it, I can't remember if it was you or Taylor who said if you pick a local brewery, it was Dallas Taylor. Oh my god, that shit made me laugh because like that is like a scumbag thing. Because I was about to say, I was like, I have this place called Epic Deli in my hometown that makes like wild sandwiches, like the D Rose is a meatball with like Doritos on it, like. Just like stuff like that. It just like makes like wild stuff right, like but that. But no one gets to know that. Right. And that's what I was saying. I was like, I couldn't wait to do it. And then I thought the Taylor Down, I'll get roasted. Dude, there was a spot in Virginia called The Deli. Italian owned, mom and pop, family operated. And it was incredible. We'd get sandwiches. I'm talking, you could get Gouda cheese on these things. And he would send you, they're so Italian. When you got the, uh, we would get the sandwich. A few of us would go in there like days before a game or something like on Friday before a game. And uh, he would give us free cannolis, like, to go. It was phenomenal. But anyways, you start this thing off. Do you okay, like can you I have your tears? No, but can I just talk? I want to talk about a couple that could be in my tears that, like, hit home for me. Go ahead. I do this quite a bit. So Penn Station was Terre Haute, Indiana. Okay. Where Indiana State is. And there was one right next to the stadium. Um, so I would hit it on the way home from practice. Fire? Yeah, gasoline. Yeah. Yes. But out of your top three. No, it could be. I'm just thinking, but You're I'm just, just talking out loud. Belly is Green Bay for me. Like if I want like a sa or a, a sandwich and soup. Yeah. I hit Pop Belly's. That's right next to the stadium. Yeah, brother. I wouldn't put Panera as like clubs. I think that that's more like a. 
Like a bougie? Yeah, just like, you know, like breakfasts or quick, something quick or like the soups in the wintertime up in Green Bay. Have you ever had their front Shadow Campbell chicken? soup. Um, Have you ever had their front chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had the their soup front... that eats like a meal? I've said that a thousand times. Their front chicken. Yeah. And era. the sandwich you're talking about, like the panini? Yeah. It's a, called the front chicken. It's pretty... I just probably just say, can I have the chicken panini? Because I didn't know how to pronounce it. What's Skolowski's? <laughs> Shalotsky's. All right, what's Shalotsky's that? Shalotsky's is fire. I've never heard I've of it. I've only had it a few times in my life, Can I see, though, like, so the logo good. of that? I'm so- Thank you, Jack. What did you say, JV? Have you ever had Room 40? Room 40? Room 40, no. Room 40's nuts? <laughs> Dude, how did I get God, dude? I was really like, I felt like there was like a, <laughs> dude, I'm usually on that shit. Oh my God, that shit's in, but oh you, you I can't, dude, my whole, my whole reputation is about to be fucked, dude. <laughs> I Why, can't, cause you don't get God, you're, you're known as the guy in your friend group that doesn't get God No, like we that? all do it to each other. Like, like, but, oh no. JP. That was, re- isn't there a there. restaurant that's really close to that? Like. Something with the number? <laughs> Fuck, dude. I really am just trying to really just... Oh, I... Fuck. I feel, yeah, it's Shalosky right there. I feel like I've seen it. More like Quiz knows. Um, Jimmy John's is like kind of like the, the Taylor situation. Like, I've just had it so many times in like different areas, but it's not bad. Freaky fast. Firehouse is gasoline. I had that for the first time in Frisco when I was pre-draft training. And they also have one in Green Bay. But I would take, okay, Jersey Mike's is gas, too. You feel like you know what you got? I don't even know. This is hard. Because I'm a you do super. Say, you will be judged. Right. And I really, <laughs> off topic, my tier 1A would be a homemade sub. Just saying that. But we'll go, we'll play the game. A homemade sub. Like, there's nothing like a Sunday, like growing up, like watching, you know, football with your dad and like just having a, a nice cold cut sandwich from home, like a salami. Throw some and chips on it. Throw some chips. Just watching the game with some, you know, Campbell's chunky soup. <laughs> um, dude, and then I had Publix for the first time, like not not recently, but like the last couple of years when I moved here. So people are hardcore on on what is it? Pub subs. Yeah. Damn. All right. The pot Start belly. The Tier three. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna just say my top three, and then I'll put them in order. Can I do that? Just, yeah. But yeah, 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 just to get them off my chest, so yeah. I can eliminate. Um. Okay. I'm gonna go. Penn Station, Pot Belly, and Jersey Mike's. Put them in order. <laughs> And this is just talking the sandwich, nothing else. Yeah, I mean, if you want to throw some, this is a hard one because there's not like throw variety some like a, in there. No, I think it's not just the sandwich; it's it's what the restaurant has to offer. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, with that's the how soups we judge. and yeah, stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. soup like you're saying with pot belly, that might that's that number one. Then it's, it's not the best sandwich; it's just the best sandwich chain. So, what do they have to offer? I like Jack. Yeah, he's, he's good. He's he, my favor. He, he, yeah, <laughs> get that stash too. Yeah. Dirt, good, dirty. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with pot belly number one because I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what I get. I get the att- start with number three. Oh, sorry, dude. All right, <laughs> damn. All right, I'm gonna go Penn Station number three, tier three Penn Station. Okay, and I get the um, Philly cheesesteak with no mushroom, extra onions, and peppers. I'm allergic to mushrooms. You're allergic to mushrooms, yeah. Fungus, dude. Yeah. I wasn't breastfed. Leave me alone. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Formula fed, boy. Formula fed. Shout out Bill Gates. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I'm going to go with that at the tier three. Jersey Mike's, just like the variety of subs there, like... You know, the meatball. Then they also have a chicken chipotle cheesesteak there, I think, or a, a bunch of Phillies as well. The meatball sub goes crazy there. I think there's just, like, such a variety of 
there's buffalo chicken ranch, you know, one there. I think that's just the variety. Mm. I'm going to go tier two there. And then number one is pot belly because the Italian with double meat, pause, mm. and no pause. no pause, double meat on the Italian with broccoli cheddar soup. And I'm, That's a good and soup. I'm dunking that hoe. <laughs> and That's a, soup. That's a good soup. Yeah. And then. Yeah, that, that's the Popeye's number one, just solely based on my orders. Let's hear it. Let's hear you. Oh, man. Um, I put some thought into this, boys. And this was on the spot, too. What? So let's hear about yours. You well, thought you about this about? for a week. And yeah, we got beef back here. <laughs> no, no, no. We came up with this today. Okay, so you've had, you know, a couple hours. You could have yeah. shot me a text. I, I could have. That, yeah. that is on me. That is on me. We did tell you before the pot started, so you've had like an hour and a half now. Yeah, but I was talking about, you know, I was getting deep into like internal stuff. You can't be, I can't be thinking That's about. That's true. That's true. I can't be thinking about sandwiches when I'm talking about but growth. You should be most clear now. You know what I mean? You should have that clarity. Bro, I'm hungry. I might stop and get pot belly. So my number is there three. there one around here? Yeah. In the pot gulch. bellies? Oh, yeah. There is a is pot there belly. one around here, though? Yeah, in the oh. gulch. Say less. I'm there. <laughs> Go ahead. Proceed. All right, so... Um, Publix smacks, though, dude. Fuck. So Publix, there's been a lot of good chatter about Publix. The boys in the back, they talk it Publix up high. Like, I am not from this world since I haven't had Publix. I've had it one time. And again, it was after the case race. You saw the apple juice sitting out there. Like, I bought apple juice and I They're bought... Italian sub, uh, Italian. Yeah, a, a Publix sub, a pub sub. But I didn't put thought into it. I just needed something in my stomach because I was on the verge of throwing up. So I just needed something in my belly. Um, so I, I have not experienced Publix like that. I've seen it on the charts. There's rankings out there. There's articles that has pub sub, like top three and a lot of different stuff, a lot of different headlines. But for me, I, I do want to give a shout out to firehouse subs before I start. That's going to be honorable mention. Yeah, that is my honorable mention. Yeah. That's what, that was number four yeah. for me. Matter of fact, can we get a uh, moment of silence for firehouse subs? Thank you. Okay. Can I say one thing? Go ahead. Back to like Penn Station tier three. Why? The the length. Pause again. Doesn't you can, matter. Doesn't matter. Double can, meat, the length. Dude, you can get, I think it goes up to like past, I think there's 16 inches. Like I think. Monster like it's Like you get like, you know, the bang for your buck. Like you. Yeah. And their fries are good. On Sundays in my college town in Knoxville, I swear this is why Penn Station closed down, but you could buy one, get one and free on Sundays. So you right. get a 12-inch and you get a free 12-inch sub. You're set for the whole day. Right. Russian. It was the best on Sundays, yes. And then the fries were incredible. I've never had Penn Station. I would love to try it based on the it's way you guys East are Coast talking sub. about it. East Coast sub. Okay. But I Dude, do I'm really good. A, I feel good about my list now. I wanted to give my shout-out to Firehouse Subs. No free shout-outs, of course, because I do love Firehouse. I think they have a banger. Uh, not the hook and ladder. Maybe it's just called the firehouse. Where it's like uh, ham, turkey, roast beef. Add bacon to it. Get the works put on it. All the stuff. You and would be they, a roast beef guy. I think roast beef just comes on the sandwich. Maybe it doesn't have roast beef. Roast beef is probably definitely the lowest on the deli meats for sure. But that's just what comes on that sandwich. And then they have all the uh, all the hot sauces that to choose from. But my tier three, I've been going back and forth on this because I think this is, people get you. People are fucking out to get you, depending on how low some of your tiers are. They're like, oh, that should be your fucking tier one. Then I would have went with you. And it's like, listen, we're trying to rate the greatest sandwiches. You don't need time. external validation. It's all internal. You're right. But doing a podcast and living on Twitter, you kind of, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get to a million followers. So, but my tier three, I'm going to go with Jimmy John's. For a cold sub, I'm going to Jimmy John's. Freaky fast, freaky good. Their yeah. bread, I love their bread. Their bread is so I love good. how full, I love how full their sandwich it's... is. For real. I love how full their sandwich is. The mail the that they- The gargantuan? Ooh, I got that one time. Italian, Heavy well, I, I'm like all about the Italian. Italian stuff. nightclub? Yeah, Italian nightclub. The, uh, is there a country club as well? Yeah. Yes. And I think it might be the Italian nightclub add bacon or one of those add bacon. The country club might already have bacon. But the way those things fit in your hand and the mayo that they swab all over the bread, 
Dude. Dude, he definitely thought about this. Yeah, you, well, how do you not? You see all the mayo. They, they like, their mascot is mayo. No, I'm Wait, talking about your presentation of that. No, <laughs> no you said you got the me. mayo around the rim. You got me. I love the, no, the Jimmy Once John's, Jimmy the, the, John's the mayo is. windows with the foot long and everything like that. I was like, what I do love about Jimmy John's is how packed in it is. You know, you know what I mean? No, yeah. Especially for a cold sub. There's no other really cold sub. Jimmy I'm John's getting. bread and mayo alone is. Yes. Good. Because all the other spots, like I'm usually getting like a toasted sandwich. Um, my tier two is going to be, I'm sticking to my roots. I'm sticking old faithful. It's never let me down. High school, growing He's up. on Subway, right? High school, <laughs> college. Oh my any, God. Any like you can dude. count on this sandwich at any point of your life. Oh, no, you can't, dude. Subway. Oh, eat fresh. Oh. Eat fresh. People are listen, 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 listen. People are probably going to drag. I'll but see you later, Will. <laughs> <laughs> People are probably going to drag. However, they're forgetting Subway? how they grew up. I, they're no, forgetting I how they grew up. Because you get, like, pick a sandwich from there. Chicken, bacon, ranch. Want to know what I grew up on from Sweet there? onion, chicken, terry. Yeah, you, got the, you had the homemade and you had the little local spot. No, 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 no. I'm talking about from Subway. I was really eating that tuna. No way. That shit was gasoline, but they just realized, that, or they just came about that there was zero tuna DNA in that. Yeah, that shit's tough. To, I'm built different. I know, it's tough, to, <laughs> yeah. But the I'm sweet onion chicken different. teriyaki. Yeah. Add bacon, get the banana peppers, get the onions, throw a party with the onions. Don't be shy. Um, yeah, obviously, the sweet onion there. sauce, some honey mustard, and I usually put it on, what, what is it, the, uh, uh, the honey honey bread? Honey, oh, oh honey oat or honey, honey oat? Yeah, yeah, the honey oat bread is usually why I get it. Damn, on. I really. You're not getting that Italian uh, urban Ita cheese. Ita Italian, Italian ur urban cheese, Italian yeah. Urban cheese is fire as the well. Smells alone there, might. But you know when you're, you, you know when you're a young cat and you want everything sweet. I'm talking. I'd get a sweet tea and drop two sweet lows in it. So that's why I would get the honey oat bread, foot long on Subway, sweet onion chicken, chicken teriyaki. Also. Don't sleep on their fucking cookie experience, boys. Oh, man. Subway cookies Fuck. are fire. That macadamia nut, chocolate chip, pick your poison. Uh, their chips, fire. They got the Lay's. They got everything you need. You ever had Doritos? Yeah. <laughs> um, my tier one. Dude, you just made a great case for Subway. Dude, right? It's just, I, I forgot where I came from. Exactly. And I do think I'm people, sorry. people that are going to drag me, people Full that circle. are going to drag me, they're going to just, because I get it, we've gotten older. I thought Subway was like the best Subway spot. Then I go to college, I learn about Jimmy John's. I learn about all these other places, Quiznos, Firehouse, Pop Belly. And you're just like, oh shit, Subway's really not like that. It's kind of like the Walmart of sandwiches. You can count on it, lowest prices guaranteed. And there's a little bit of everything for everyone there. You should run for president. You really, you really just made me believe Subway was good for a little bit. It's fire, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my tier one. If all of these spots are lined up next to each other, and I'm choosing a spot, gun to my fucking head. Jesus. Hot belly sandwich. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting the. I'm getting the big. Don't isn't that what they call them? The big. Yeah. The big. Yeah. You get the big. You get the double meat, chicken bacon ranch. Uh, fully fucking loaded. I want all of it. I want the hot peppers. I want the sauces. Yeah, you want ranch. it all. I want it all. And you're right. The uh, the uh, uh, the broccoli cheddar soup is a fucking money. Maker. And you get the little oyster crackers that come with it. They give you a little bag. Yeah. And you're they're in their bag. And I like the vibe when you go in there too. It's kind of dark. Dude, and they got a pizza sub there that's good too. Like they got you know the meat. They got. I just I'm solely just thinking Italian subs when I go in there. And though. they load it up, bro. They do. Like you might their double, say meat double meat is like, but they're fucking like yeah. It's like the gargantuan. So pot belly, pot belly is my tier one, and that is my uh, my tier talk for best sandwich chains nationally. Fellas, comments, concerns. Hey, can we hear some? We need a third person's. Yeah, so if third you guys, party. Third part, yeah. Good call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got you, big dog. <laughs> I'll, I'll hit it. I, yeah, I, Jack, I let's hear it. Yeah. I love subs. I mean, I think they're the most elite, probably lunch meal. I yes. didn't put it in the best meal in general, but I know. Talk that, to him, Jack. That will take, you know, I might get drugged. Not going if you're with us, boys. But yes. Subs, it's just, it's easy. We have all grown up having them. If I have to go tier three. Well, wild in the day. Um, <laughs> 
Honorable mention, I'm going to go Jimmy John's just because it's freaky fast. It's easy. If you're on the run, you see Jimmy John's. You're running through there. You're in and out. College. Jimmy John's in college. You're in and out in five minutes. One o'clock. Yeah, one o'clock. Yeah. deep in a sub. Um, (laughs) Throat deep in the sub. Throw in there. (laughs) Tier three for me, though, uh, it wasn't even mentioned even in in conversation for y'all, but is Witch Witch for me. Never had it. That's why. So, show me the logo. Never heard of it either. Um, Witch Witch, they closed down the one. <laughs> hey, J- JP, it's mid. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, that ain't valid. Yeah, this is Witch Witch. Uh, you like go in, you get like a, uh, a never paper bag. It. It's like this. Either. And they got um, the branding team all, all the stuff good. on it, and you just kind of mark it with a Sharpie. Anyways, I've really enjoyed a Witch Witch. Mark it with a Sharpie. I think everybody does that. No, you like go in and like you yeah, write you your order down. Ooh, that's and a fun experience. Yeah, fun experience. So experience too. Yeah, man, you get creative with that. Oh, stuff. and they yell it. Yeah. Oh man, Put daddy on his easily, um, <laughs> easily. Yeah, I, I like a good witch witch sub. I haven't had it in a while, so I don't know if that's uh, part of the reason. It's just in my brain. Number two for me is gonna be the pub sub. Um, Respect from a cost perspective, it's it's so cheap for so much food. Um, love the Italian. A, a hallowed sub there is the chicken tender sub. You have oh, to yeah. toss in some buffalo if you're into that yeah. kind of thing. They they do it. It's quality um, fresh bread every day. So love a good pub sub. And for me, tier one is gonna have to be Jersey Mike's because it's something I grew up with, kind of like your Subway, which I also grew up with Subway. And the Subway smell alone. As yeah. a kid would sell you. You walk in there and you're, you're like, Some's, it's a drug, it's something. Subway, though, is not on my list. Not even close, even though I'd had it two weeks ago. I don't fuck with Jared. But so. number one. Yeah, Jared. Yeah, Jared, is yeah. That's is, a whole nother. Yeah. We can get into that why, later. Hey, Come why on. not even close? Can we talk about that? Can we dive in? I think it was one of those things as a kid. It was so good. It was like, oh, mom's like, yeah, we're going to get Subway. It's like, you go in there just for the smell. And it was amazing. And then as you grew up. It was almost like um, five dollar footlongs on Tuesdays. But the thing is, now there's no they they lie. They were there's, five dollars. You dude. go and get a footlong sub at Subway. You Come get chips and a drink. You're coming out of there like twelve dollars. It's like back in the day, I get almost you know two and a half subs for this. Like what happened? Yeah. Subway oh, so prices went up. Inflation. Oh, inflation, inflation hit hard. Yeah, all time high. Um, but I don't know. Subway is like it's like when you rewatch a movie when you were a kid that you used to love, and you're all of a sudden you're like, yo, this movie's ass like it does not <laughs> hold up over time like it's just not there anymore but like you still appreciate it for what you had as a child it's with like it. the airbuds yeah it's like damn what a what like, a like, old-time like a movie yeah when you watch and you're like man like if i was a kid and there's like a grown man dressed as a clown trying to steal my dog like me and my homies are just gonna beat this dude's ass like the story doesn't hold up but over time yes. you still appreciate it for what it was yeah anyways Back to number one, Jersey Mike's. Great selection of subs, uh, quality ingredients. I love their bread. It's n- never like um, stale and it's never too soft. It's like right there in that equilibrium of perfect bread to me. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Subs in general, I'll eat all of them. I wish I could put pot belly in mine, but yeah. I just haven't had as much experience with pot belly. I've only had it like two or three times. So, I can't, with a clean conscience, put that in there because it's just. Not my sub, but I think I might go get it later. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about doing with Publix. But I'm like, everybody in the back would know I'm kind of fraudulent by claiming pub sub. The only the only issue with pub subs is you have to f- go into a grocery store, and it just kind of the line can be long. It takes you know, yeah. it takes away from the experience almost. Someone's like next, you're like, yo, can I get a pound of salami? And it's like, yeah, I'm just trying to get this sub in there either. Yeah, you got to yeah. holler at a guy. It's like good like when you're going grocery shopping there, and then you're like, I'm just gonna get a sub on the way out. So you don't eat your groceries already? For sure. Yeah, yeah, that's the best. Yeah, yeah, if you can go for a two for one, then it's money. But what I do appreciate about this tier talk and conversation is just that everybody's paying homage to fucking every brand out there. Because it's hard to mess no up. Neg- up. No negativity, dude. No negativity. No, no negative here. vibes, boys. But no. Jack, I like. I definitely understand yeah. that angle of Subway. It's like now that I'm 32, I rarely go into a Subway, but I would feel. I don't know. I think my younger self would not be proud of the man I am today if I didn't like pay homage to Subway and what I it agree. did. What it did for my life growing up. And I, I got Subway two weeks, not even two weeks ago. What'd you get? Saturday. What'd you get? I got the uh, the spicy Italian. Yes. It's a good one. Yeah. There's some spinach, red onion, jalapenos, banana peppers, little uh, sriracha. 
Uh, See, there's nothing. zero lettuce or Subway, green. There's zero plant touching Subway my Subway got rid of spicy sandwich. mustard on their sauce menu. <laughs> Subway deleted spicy mustard, which to me, that was, that was the falling point. Yeah. When everything just went downhill... I, I disagree. I think spicy mustard, mustard isn't even in the top three sauce at their spot. Okay, can I um? Speak oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would judge a place by their mustard. Mustard is like the best condiment for me. That's a good condiment to love. Yeah, like I any mustard, like I think it's Dijon, honey, spicy. Yeah, that's the German in me though. I just I love like the grainy mustard too. Like I'm German as well. So. You just scoop the soft pretzel. I'm German, a German. <laughs> Just scooping it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm like a quarter or half or something like that. Mustard and mayo is a great combo, though. But Dude. mustard over mayo, hands down. He's right. Mm, I light disagree. Mayo. I think mayo. Yeah. Dude. You add salt and pepper. Mayo's fire. nickname is mayo. That's why you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Eat the mayo, get a little bit on your lip when you get done eating. Chill out. <laughs> King Kong, you got a little bit right there. Like, I'm not doing my sandwich yet. Yeah. Scoop it. Like hey, the hun- the honey mustard, the sweet onion sauce? Yeah. Ranch? Gas. Yeah. I mean, come on. Sweet onion sauce is gas. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out sandwiches for real. I'll be interested to see what Taylor's uh, tiers are. Outside of his tier one, we know what his tier one is. We're not going to say it because it's going to be his moment. Uh, but <laughs> he's got... <I'm- laughs> What else do we have? Do we have anything? Have I missed anything? It's been an hour 49, boys. We've had a great yeah. fucking time. I think we hit it all. Did we not? Is there some? Oh, Devontae Adams. Did we know he was going to leave the whole time? Come on, dude. I can't say anything. Okay, so that means yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got we needed. Everybody go subscribe. Um, anything else? That I'm, I'm happy for him that he got everything that he deserves. He's happy. His family's growing. That dude deserves everything that he wants and wherever he wants to go. I'll say that. What, um, that was well said. Uh, what did, uh, Foster Morrow say was his nickname? Vaunt. Is that his nickname? Vaunt? No. Hey. You never called him Vaunt? Never. I'm hearing that's what he's, that's what the boys Damn, are. Sw- nah. If he's switching, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing it's Vaunt. Maybe it's just different. Maybe he's different. I don't know. That's what I'm hearing. That's the rumor out of Vegas. Maybe. Uh, but. <laughs> All right. Do we need to get a top five tight end ranking out of him? I mean, I feel like we already have that by people. Not from him. Care to share your top. Maybe, your top. Maybe what? I will, yeah, I was going to say, I will give you because everyone's good and rankings really don't mean shit, especially coming from anyone. Plus, yeah. what the boys' rankings mean everything. So when we put our list out there, it's fucking Bible. I will say this are five tight ends that I watch. Like, these are, like, the five guys' games that I study. Okay. For, like, my benefit. In order. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, obviously, you know, you self-study, so I'll take myself out of the top five for the list. Um, I will go, I mean, G, Trav. um, D, Wall. I'm just looking at like in my iPad. I mean, <laughs> I love Skit. Um, I mean, I study uh, Mark. Um, I mean, I study Sadie's too. Like those are the five like people that I just truly study. Like study, study. All right. Andrews from Baltimore. Stud. He wasn't at tight end you, though, was he? Not this year. No. That's Am tough. I missing anyone off the top of my head that like? I mean, I also study TJ because. Oh damn. But I studied TJ. I was ready for him to be like, nah, you know, hey, that was a great episode. Hey, TJ, that sucks. He didn't say your name. <laughs> so the, the people that I study the most are George and TJ because I know mentally what they're thinking. Ah, uh, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I know them. I'm close with them. So I know, like, what they're seeing, what they're thinking, yada, yada. And that's why, like, it's so easy for me to study George because, I mean, we have, again, one brain, half and half. Mm-hmm. And just figure it out. Yeah. But I would yeah. So, other than Sadie's, like, I just study Sadie's blocking, obviously. So, I'd go the people that I study, George, Trav, Mark, D-Wall, and TJ, no particular order. All right. And do we'll, not we'll put we'll an order. First one. We'll use the first one that he said with TJ out of it, and then we'll tag DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I literally just saw him as we're leaving PT. He's like, oh, you got busting? Oh, hell yeah. And I'm, I'm right over my head. 
It's fucked up. Yeah, he's got a. Uh, he's coming on Thursday. Yeah, that's what you're saying. What are we gonna ask TJ? You got anything we should ask him? I can't wait. He's just a, such a sweetheart, dude. Yeah, I lo- he is. He's just I love such TJ. a good dude, man. He's just a great dude. I appreciate you for coming on, though, bro. Like, I always, like, uh, like I said this earlier in the pod, but I re- always appreciate, like, your perspective on everything because mm-hmm. we had that pod last year, and I remember leaving, like, driving home and telling my wife and stuff, like, yo, I just, I really enjoy being around, like, George and Rob. It was my first time meeting you. I was like, yeah. you just have, like, vibes to where it's the environment you want to be around, especially if you're training and, like, doing everything else. I thought, like, what you guys have done kind of in Nashville, putting a little squad together and everything else, um, I think is fucking awesome. Like, something yeah. that I... Not that I didn't have it, but you're like, man, that would have been cool to, like, have, like, linebackers like that the way you guys are with your tight ends. Um, and then you turn your ACL and kind of text with you a couple times and just catching up with you every now and then. I've just always yeah. appreciated your kind of, like, perspective and mental fortitude and mental, like, development over time. And it's just oh, something yeah. I've, you know, I just wanted to tell you. But I appreciate, I appreciate you for coming on, I man. appreciate you guys for having me, dude. Yeah. I always have a blast. You guys are the best. I, I love seeing you guys, like, out and shit like that. It's fun. Dude, you, you gave us the, you gave me my better one of probably my best bit yeah oh we didn't even talk about yeah, that we can, we can talk about that because i, I oh I, I my didn't... gosh we didn't even talk about that the hey do me a favor shut the fuck up yeah what do you want to talk about about the it? t-shirts dude you did you get the one last no year? i'm not even talking about that you put it on black and white t-shirt ain't nobody buying a black and white t-shirt i i do understand and, 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 and you're talking about vibes you got to put tie-dye on that bitch yeah i tie-dye, do me a favor and it's like oh hell yeah turn around shut the fuck up yeah gas so He's in black the and reason white. we weren't able to do multiple colors garrett can attest to this working with merchandise now now our merchandise is doing well I paid for everybody store.barstoolsports.com correct Slash bust with the boys. Go to our store, continue to buy merch. But at that point, we're kind of handcuffed on stuff that we can do because we weren't like proving concepts over time or like one would be really good, but the others weren't like doing as well. Um, I should have trademarked it before you took off with it and just sued you for everything you fucking have. Just do me a favor, shut the fuck up. Yeah, in now, court. Now, I mean, now it's like, <laughs> now you're yeah, in court, just standing there fucking suit and tie and everything. Will comes to the stand. Um, but, yeah, now I'm, like, taking people for walks. The, yeah, I mean, it. no, I'm glad that you, like, you know, brought, you know, more to it. But, you know, you could have tagged me in a couple of them, right? I think I did the first time. Oh, wow, out of your 100 <laughs> videos? I gave you literally your best content. Here's the thing. Oh, not his best content. I was just talking shit. No, I, no, no, best no. I, the credit, credit goes to Rob and George for their Xbox uh, fucking shit talking on hey do us and a you favor. met the bomb squad at yes, Kittle Fest. Bro. you met the you met the boys dude george is such an interesting cat man like george is like all you guys are about welcoming fucking i'm not that everybody shouldn't be but you guys got your bomb squad xbox team that you never met in person out at Kittle Fest. uh george has <laughs> got a group chat on instagram that flew out went to Kittle Fest that he was just they they're just football fans that meme that meme him and like talk football with him and george yeah. just never stopped responding and then they're all flying out to Kittle Fest. And the, all these different varieties of people are at Kittle Fest, which is a fucking but changes, blast, It way. just, like, changes, like, their life. Like, they'll never experience that ever. Yeah. Which is cool. I mean, that's, I mean, that's G, though. Too. Yeah, that's awesome. people in experience, for sure. Yeah, George is awesome. But, like, yeah, from your guys' VOM squad, the do me a favor stuff, the take them for a walk, all that came from you guys. I wish you guys would do it. What do you mean? Like you guys, make that's what you know. I'm not. I'm not like that on social media. I know, and you probably wouldn't be caught saying "shut the fuck up" to people. I mean, I do like publicly. Behind, yeah, I mean, I do behind closed doors. Like I told you, man, those 14 year olds do not want this <laughs> smoke, dude. They do not. Yeah, but I got a couple other ones that I probably shouldn't say on camera that are funny though. You can All right, say I'll one say one. Like, I got yeah. one good one. I got a good one, like, when you're when you're not doing a good job, and they're like, oh, like, you know, the, like, my name on there is, like, whatever. What is and, your name? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, you can't say it, because obviously. So they'll say my name and be like, oh, Danny look. Yeah, you know, you're, uh, where were you that fucking round? Like, zero kills? I'm like, oh, hold on. Sorry. I couldn't fucking see the screen. Your girl was sitting on my face. <laughs> God damn, just going after him. That's fucking That's hilarious. Like, Dude, your girl's ass cheeks are on my face. I can't fucking uh, see the screen. Brother, shit talking over video games and stuff is so iconic. And then they'll be like, oh, I don't have a girl. I'm like, I wonder why. It's just constantly. You fucking loser. <laughs> they just get back to playing. Just constantly just going back. Well, I appreciate you, bro. No, this I appreciate awesome. you. Dude, give me a, your all-pointer finger, dude. 
See, I read that about you. Oh, you talking about the, the yeah the pointer? Yeah, every time I read that about you, and I go pointer finger. I'm a good reader. Oh, you do it now? No, I do it with you because okay. you're a pointer finger. I guy. didn't know if you're trying to like you know legacy. You're spreading it around Green Bay, and now the whole squad in Green Bay is doing it. You're not like that. <laughs> hey, you're not him. You you are not him. Yeah, you are not him. <laughs>